So the main question for today is, does Lee think that there's a problem with judging in the UK? Dun, dun. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Is that the? Is that going to be the highlight for the? I event? might, yeah. I might bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be funnier if I bleep what you just said to so no one knows. But we know. Um, <clears throat> all right, shall we begin? Let's go. Um, Rodocaster. They always make me do the do the intro as part of the thing, because I always want to put the the intro at the beginning and then we just start speaking. Yeah, but then Jen always says that we have to like actually live push the button for the intro. Well, so why don't you? What's so the problem? Do it. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. Wait, What's wait. your problem? My problem is that I don't even understand why we're not pressing the button. All right, let's press it. Come on. Whoop. Ooh. There we go. That was the live intro. Um, how was that? How was that experience for you? Did yeah, you that was fun. It? Did you make that? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's a guy waiting. called uh, Ronnie Picasso. From that's Ronnie Picasso. New York. Yeah. Yeah. I like that guy. Um, I'm not sure that he's aware that I'm using that as an intro. Um, <laughs> so if it ever changes, he found out. Anyway, so <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Welcome to the cabs here, everyone. Uh, we are back in a new home uh, for now. We are at East London Dance, the talent house specifically. Um, I always just call this building East London Dance, but it's the ta- East London it's Dance's the talent house. Talent house. Um, and that's why we're here, because we're so talented. They said you have to be here. Um, we all live in houses. And what? We all live in houses. We do, well, actually, no, oh, I technically, you don't. <laughs> yeah, technically I don't at the moment. Um, <laughs> so I, just to explain, I am moving flats and we will be returning um, to the new flat when we move. In the interim, uh, East London Dance have been super kind and allowed us to operate from their home for approximately the next six weeks, I believe. Um Fingers crossed nothing goes wrong or my flat suddenly catches fire and I have to beg them to stay longer. But yeah, so we are here. We are in the talent house in uh, technically Stratford, are we? Where are we? Sugar House Lane. Stratford, yeah. Sugar Through House Sugar House Island. Island. Um, yeah, beautiful building. If you've been to any of the events here, there was the um, AIM takeover week. There was a Rain Crew takeover week. What else was here? Daniel Fung and Kaylee Price. Yeah. There's been a few oh, takeover sick. weeks. Um, yeah, really nice place, lovely building, couple of great studios, and yeah, plenty of shit happening here. Um, also, just to say that if you're new here, there will be swearing, there will be opinions, and um, it's maybe something that you shouldn't listen to if you're too young, but we'll see. Um, there's also a disclaimer on the beginning of every podcast, so please read through that uh, because it's important. Um, so we have a couple of guests in the building today. I d- oh, we're general here. I don't even know which button is which. Let's make a guess. Just meet Tally. No. Bye bye, Jenny. No. Luke. No. Look. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> guests in the building. Um, so, hi Lee. Hi. We have Lee here. If you've if you're an avid listener of the capsule, you'd already know Lee. Um, He's been on before. He's also, we did uh, an interview. I don't remember which number, but it was a while ago now with the UMA crew, it's called. Um, Lee is one of my closest friends. We've been friends since we were maybe 17, 18. And we just started uh, popping and we were super excited every time UK Champs came around. And we were like, oh, we might see Salon. Um, This is, yeah, when we met. And uh, if you also are a follower of the capsule, you might know that Lee recently did a um, art in, uh, research project slash piece on dancers. Yeah, it what's it called? Uh, how would you call that? I call it a body of work. No, uh, what's it called? Created some work based around yeah. some dancers in the scene. That's, that's it. Namely, Camille, Breaks, Abe. Just yeah. those three. Um, so yeah, hi Lee. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, it's good. How did everything go with your um, with the piece? Yeah, it went really well. So I, I displayed all the work at uh, the Other Art Fair, mm-hmm. uh, which is a Saatchi Gallery hosted event, which is no big, big boy deal. stuff. Big boys. And uh, yeah, it went sick. Sold some work. Um, people loved it. Like the general public, other artists. 
And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it went really good, man. Sick, sick, sick. Yeah. And uh, yep, yep, yep. anything that you'll be doing again soon? By any chance? Well. With no prior knowledge? Ooh. <laughs> uh, well, I'd, yeah, I recently just got accepted into the other art fair again uh, for their October fair. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be hitting that button all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the producer now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, but this time I won't be presenting uh, dance work. So I'm taking, oh. I'm doing like dance, another project, dance, another project. So the other project for now is uh, I'm working with some uh, uh, British sprinters. Ooh. Yeah, for so it's all movement. So this this movement project is about Sick. sprinting. So are you gonna you're gonna be doing more stuff with dancers? Yeah, yeah. So the next project, I already have an idea in mind of who I want to work with, but Ooh. I haven't asked them yet. So if people want to be involved in your projects, can they audition? Ooh, well, I had already at the firehouse event on the weekend. Someone asked me to um, if if basically to work together and collab on art stuff. So like, I'm always always open to ideas. Like I just want to make as much fine art and art about street dance as possible so any ideas throw them at me boom for sure hit them in the dms um and on my left we have please say your name so that i don't butcher it now i don't know no, how to say, say my name it, say it how it's supposed to be said Maren. and how everyone else says it is megan <laughs> <laughs> give it up for megan <laughs> I, I don't even know. There's so many variations, and I think it's uh, partially my problem because when I first came to the UK, I was like, "I'm not gonna stay here. These people don't need to know my name." They're so like Megan, right? And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm not gonna know him in two weeks." And then ten years later, you're like, Shit. "For real? No, I screwed myself. So now I'm Marin, Marin, Maureen, Miranda. Maureen is hilarious. Um, Maureen. And I hate all of them. Yeah. The only kind of acceptable one is, I guess, Marin, because it's the closest to Marin. I'm very guilty of saying Marin. I've yep. said Marin until today. Yeah. Yeah. I've started to try and change to Maren. Yeah. I also call Nadia Nadia all the time. Is she not Nadia? No, she's Nadia. She's, oh, wow. There's a guy called Jordan who's called Jordan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That? J-O-U, right? I don't know. Jor Jordan. Anyway. Let's call him Jordan from now. Jor Jordan. Jordan. Um, Jordan. So, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Megan and Jeff. <laughs> and Luke. That sounds like <laughs> that a sitcom. We should take the show on the road. <laughs> Megan, and <laughs> Megan and Jeff's world tour. Um, so who are, who are you here representing today? You're, you're half... Human woman. Yes. And half <laughs> robot. Yes. That's exactly where I was going with that question. <laughs> Thanks for filling that in. <laughs> well, I'm creative producer so i am creative director of rain crew boop boop and then i'm a part-time artist producer at east london dance uh, as well cool. as producing for some independent street dance artists nice so your office is right there right and there, then your yeah. rain crew office is not right where there. wherever yeah um World. cool well for people that don't know tell us a bit about rain crew well, rain crew is I was try is it a breaking crew because we now it's kind of more a mixed styles mm. crew but I'd say the foundation is breaking East London crew has been around for about 15 years and we're also a company so a non-profit company we do a lot of outreach work and community work but then we also battle our friends put on jams and all that good stuff yeah I feel like the the name like rain crew like in people's heads, they just think, oh, it's a bunch of people that like dance together, like Fair. in every other crew, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah. they're just a battle crew. But actually like knowing you guys, you did way more than, and you're actually like an organization that does stuff. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but we're a crew first, sure. which I think is what makes it cool that we're also a company because so many times people put on events for the hip hop dance community, no idea what they're talking sure. about or what they're doing. So Rain Crew tries to be those people that, can platform and provide opportunities for the community by the community yeah i mean it's hard to be both as, as well because like sometimes yeah. you get these events or whatever where it's like someone that's really in the culture but with no organizational experience or anything yeah and then the flip where someone's really good at organization and stuff but just has no idea what people actually want from the scene so yeah yeah um yeah shout out to rain crew always been a fan big ups uh, hey. except for when warren wants to argue about biscuits um <laughs> Um, yeah, so how are you guys today? What's going on? How's life? Life is good. I'm just today working at East London Dance. So, yeah. Shh, don't tell them. I know. <laughs> they think paid. she's working right now. 
<laughs> yeah, what what am I doing? We're currently working on a research project with Rain Crew, okay. um, where we're trying to map uh, street dance organizations, but also just crews and independent artists in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to try and uh, make some collaborations happen between UK and Kenya. Sick. Why Kenya? Well, so this started from the idea that international collaboration is really hard to do when you're an independent solo artist or crew or don't have this structure behind you. Mm. So the people that get these opportunities are like the English National Ballet and organizations like that in other places. So we want to platform and like uh, just shine a light on all those other organizations that are doing actual work for the community Mm. and see if those people can connect with the groups in the UK. And we chose Kenya because we want to do it everywhere. And we wanted to start with Africa because we are, you know, in a dance from the African diaspora. And Kenya has a pretty developed art scene. So it's like an easy pilot to do it in Kenya. Sick. Um, and then hopefully we can replicate it and make some cool shit happen. That sounds very cool. Kind of like when you say like the exchange thing, is that kind of like what Clara did with the Philippine thing where exactly. like people go over mm. and come back? And exactly, sit. exactly. But opportunities like that to get that is like once every five years. Yeah. Mostly I don't. I don't big. know if I could name on one hand how many times I've heard of that in my life. No, same. Yeah. So and mostly that goes to huge organizations that mm. say they serve the hip hop community, but don't. Mm. So yeah. trying to change that. No, I think that's sick. And I think it's really cool not only for the people from those countries to come here and gain from us, but also for us to go and see. I mean, this feeds into other conversations, but I think like one of the biggest things in my opinion that needs changing or addressing at the moment is the younger generation of dancers traveling. What in the younger generation's defense, the last three years has been really hard because there's been Corona and everything and Brexit. Yeah, well, yeah. But like, not only could we not travel during Corona, but also it affected a lot of people's monies and a lot of people's families' money. So it's very hard for young people to just willy nilly fucking travel around the world like we used to. And prices have gone up. I think like when we were traveling a lot for battles, I remember paying like 30 quid for a return flight to Portugal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you get like a booking.com cheap thing for like 50. It's like you're doing the entire trip for like, you know, 100 quid or whatever. Um, now I think flights have gone up and blah, blah. So fair play um, that things have changed and, you know, it's not their fault necessarily. They're not just sitting at home being like, I don't want to travel. But <laughs> I think... Cut to every UK does saying, I don't want to travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, we kind of don't. Um, no, but I think what um, is good about these things is like the more opportunities we can for not only to give people a chance to travel and see other cultures and meet other dancers, but also to like help them to do it through like an organized type of thing. So they're being connected with the right people in those places. Like, again, we yeah. would go and travel and it's like, you go to like a tiny battle, you might not meet people, you, you know, you don't know where you're going, you go to the wrong city or whatever. So I think like, uh, yeah, these type of things are really good for giving people a chance to, to go and, and travel and meet these different dancers. And so I think you learn so much from traveling. I mean, mm-hmm. as a person, but also as a dancer and like seeing the way that different people do things in different countries, you kind of get a sense of the global dance community, which I also think that people, maybe I'm speaking out of pocket here, but people think that they have because they have YouTube and so and Insta. So they think they know what it's like around the world, right? And they think they know what it's like to battle in Paris. They know what it's like to, to go to Japan or, or, or what the community is like in those places. But and maybe less so places like like Kenya, which is, is even better that you're doing that. But I think it's like one of those things that's like you don't know what it's like until you're there. Because also not everything is on YouTube. Like yeah. you go to a battle, like the battles that we've been to in Paris and stuff, like when you're at Battle Bad, it's like you got to the semis in Battle Bad, right? And it's like the battles that you did that are online are against... A- ATN is online. ATN, Gator, Venom, and Aki. Okay, so you got four battles. That was a good percentage of the of the competition, right? That is is able to be seen on YouTube. But all of the stuff that we gained from that trip is not seen on that. No, you know what I mean. It's like the times that we ciphered, the people that we met, the things that we, the conversations we had over dinner, like the things that we learned, like the amount of stuff that. I've learned from, and th- to be honest, this is kind of one of the things that 
prompted me wanting to do this podcast is every time I traveled, I would be sitting across the table from like some of the fucking best dancers in the world and just having conversation. Oh, what do you think about the way that this goes? And what do you think? And it's like, if you're sitting at home on YouTube, you don't get those experiences and you don't learn firsthand knowledge from speaking to people and, and hearing them say their opinion. You know what I mean? It's like mm. one thing, it's a whole, everything's all interlinked this week, but like <laughs> hearing people talk on Insta stories or whatever. And it's like, you don't get the same experience as you do sitting down and talking and not to make this all about me, but everything is, but <laughs> this is like the next best thing to do in that I think is to listen to the podcast and like hear those conversations <laughs> so it's like what what podcasts oh um this one um. um no but you know what I mean it's like this and I think this is why it's so important and you know I I would encourage anyone to start a fucking podcast but also even more than that to travel and actually talk to people cipher with people meet new friends like understand different cultures see how they do things because not everything is one way if that makes sense and also, like, seeing battles on video is a total different yeah. experience than being there. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't, like, they, I, I talk about this a lot in the, when I teach workshops as well, but, like, that you, a lot, I think a lot of the translation of, like, what makes, um, a lot of, a lot of the things that translate from video, you're kind of almost missing the point. Like, people will see, and I think I see this more in hip-hop than anything, where, People see famous dancers do a move and then the crowd goes mad, right? And then they copy that move and expect the crowd to go mad when they do it. Or they copy a similar yeah. type of move or they just do like a big blow up move or whatever, right? And the thing that you're missing is it's not about that move that made the crowd uh, go mad. It's the building, uh, the build up to it. It's the structure, it's the timing, it's the energy that they can project to an, a real life audience and the use of the stage, all of which you don't really feel through a, a, a screen, you know, no matter how good the fucking camera quality is. Also on top of that, sometimes that's in the semifinals and they like people have been watching that dancer for the last six hours yeah. and it's like they've, they've really built a relationship because in those type of like really intimate environments, you get oddly connected to the people that you're what? watching very yeah. quickly. Bro, the one classic example of that, I mean, it's not an actual example, but like when, the one thing that will always get a crowd like, riled up is when you see a dancer that is clearly struggling with their stamina push hard mm. like have you ever had that where you get someone that's like just drenched in sweat and red and like breathing heavy and they go and just start going for it and like everyone goes nuts yeah. and it's like you could be watching that on the video and you're not seeing that they're tired and you have you're not seeing that the other battles that they did or that they went to every round they've done has been an extra round and they've had to push themselves harder than everyone else so when you, like you say, when you feel connected to that person, and there's, and this is again, like not to advertise my workshops, uh, see, <laughs> everything, everything's interlinked. Um, but no, but like, this is something we, we worked on is like how to generate empathy as a performer. Mm. And I think it's something that's really Ooh. important. You know, it's like, how do I make you, and this is not about like, let's say like the judging conversation or anything like that. It's just about as a performer, like how do you get the audience to feel what you want them to feel? And like, oh, this person, like, I don't know, whatever, they're trying their hardest. Because you can make it look too easy. Mad. Do you know what I mean? That's so mad, because you know, it's like, that kind of thing, like in terms of, like whether it's battles, whether it's uh, theater, whether it's stadiums or whatever, or like on screen or whatever, like that's something that I always think about, but I always intuit. And, yeah, and you're really good at that. You oh, actually thanks. use you as an example in the workshop. But yeah, Is but, it? Yeah. <laughs> or like, at least like, because some people may, might not know you, but I say stuff that I've seen you do or that I know that you do in order to explain the point but yeah go on oh wow that i'm sorry like wheeling here that was, okay that was <laughs> <laughs> sorry lovely little bromance sorry. <laughs> megan please <laughs> i'm out oh brilliant yeah sorry. But, yeah but i hadn't thought about it <laughs> <laughs> i hadn't thought about it in a situation or even just the context of yeah like you're right like that's such an important part of being in a room with other people like you're not battling uh, across from one person you're battling across from one person with judge or judges in a room full of people that are there to experience something mm. Mm. and yeah that like that engagement of of empathy from that audience yeah so that's that's pretty cool man yeah, oh, good workshop. all right yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, thanks. You should go. Um, <laughs> but you um, can. It's yeah. the other way around as well, though, because sometimes people comment on a video for that one moment. It's like, oh, you should have won, or she should have won. It's like, yeah, but you did the same thing like the previous yeah. five sure. rounds. Yeah, like yeah. you can't judge something on this one moment, however cool. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think it's like, yeah, I just think it's super important to. Even still, and, and this is coming from someone who lives their life as a fucking videographer, but even with the how good the quality cameras are, how the live streams, you can see it happening as it's happening across the world on 4K quality from different angles, and it's still better to be in the room, yeah. you know? I'm not saying don't watch the live streams because I think they're fucking amazing to, to have that level of interaction across the world now, but don't get fooled into thinking that that's the optimum way to experience yeah the, the, the next best thing is the live stream or whatever but like the, yeah, the, yeah the, exactly the premium is to be in the room of someone right? yeah and you yeah there's way more stuff that you gain from being in a room uh or just traveling and seeing other people than than yeah. just but in order for that to happen though people need to start supporting dance and hip-hop dance a bit more because right mm. now there's no funding or money like yeah. everything's closing you know youth centers close funding cuts brexit like it's very hard to travel now so even though i agree i try and travel we also need to get some more support yeah and i think it's hard because it's, it, from my understanding it's kind of like a vicious circle where it's like until we show people that there's something to support mm. they won't support it but then we can't show them that there's something to support without their support. Because yeah. it's like, you know, say with ballet or whatever, it's like there's 500 odd years of of uh, evidence that people will turn out for this. But there is evidence. Like sure. they're using hip hop dance in everything, like yeah, adverts, man. commercial, but they're just taking and not giving anything back. Sure. TikTok is huge because of, because of yeah. a lot of the stuff from either African dancing or street dancing, right? Like it's really that a lot of the dancers that I mean dancers on TikTok are, are kind of running the platform at the moment yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of that stuff is because of what we as a community or communities build for that stuff and I was actually going to say like as a point like so I think the Olympics is, is going to do that yeah, in terms agreed. of uh, creating uh, uh, um, or giving governments a reason to fund certain things yeah. but I think so that actually inspired the whole art thing that I'm doing with okay. dance yeah is that I realized that there is a, a whole scene that I have access to in terms of the fine art world that have loads of money specifically for art forms mm. and for, for pumping money into different things that, that they're not aware of or street or urban, whatever they like to call it. And I can just take that and put that back into the scene in so, a certain ways, you know, either whether it's right now it's, it's asking favors, but within a year it's going to be hiring dancers yeah. mm -hmm. for a day in a studio to do certain things or, or, creating an event or workshops or whatever, or whatever it is for, to give back to street dance in whatever way. But there are however many people in the dance scene that have skills in talking, producing, videography, art, music, whatever, that can do certain things that we're kind of screaming out for that we need. So I think there's a bunch of stuff that people can do to contribute yeah. Yeah. To, outs for, to get people outside either interested in or uh, investing in. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm just like, it has to come from ourselves, from our own community, because yeah. outside right now, no Sorry. one is really doing that. Oh, like, no one's really doing that. And now you're relying on people in the community having other skills, mm. whereas you don't ask that in many other industries, like, oh, you have to be a dancer and a producer, and also you have to have a, a, this skill in marketing and all of that. So it I just think we need to have more support from outside as well, but we can do as much as we can, like within our little, little scene with people like Lee. Yeah, yeah, and I think it also like it made me think what you were saying, where I think you can almost, I don't know, like say with if you want people to like let's say invest in the culture, it's like it's hard to say what that is, but if you create certain projects or things, people understand that more. So rather than oh you need to invest in street dancers you need to invest in this art project where i'm painting like okay that's something that we recognize we'll give you money for that you know what i mean or mm -hmm. like uh we've put on that's why i guess like hip-hop theater and stuff is kind of working a bit where it's like oh we recognize this format it's a theater show same way as ballet same way as contemporary but it's just a different style okay cool like you've put this thing together and choreographed it we can understand that so we can fund it whereas if it's kind of just like oh no but we're all gonna like stand in a circle and then like one guy dances at each time <laughs> and it's like well what would you like me to 
fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. we need to kind of create that structure ourselves where we know where that money needs to go in order to, you know, obviously the competitions and the battles are the most prevalent example of that. But yeah. yeah. That is a good point though. I did this like inclusive event design research thing and I realized like battles are freaking weird. If you, <laughs> if you are not in the scene, Agreed. you step into this space yeah. and people are just wildly dancing all around you. They're sitting wherever they want. Like if you have no idea what's going on, it's very hard to navigate that space yeah, and know man. what you're meant to do. Like if you go to the Royal Opera House, you get a brochure, you get someone pointing you to your seat, you know exactly what's yep. expected of you. And with the hip hop scene, it's like, if you don't know, well, yeah, deal screw with you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, this is again, one of my like missions in life as well, I, especially with the thing that we're trying to do more of like the, the e-hosting on the live streams and stuff. Even with the live streams, it's like, this is supposed to be the more accessible version and you've just left a camera on Someone that just tunes in halfway through is like, what the fuck is happening? Like, <laughs> that's why I think like with the one that I'm trying to do is like, you have me not as a commentator, but as someone that's like, hey, if you've just joined us, this is the semifinals. Here's what that means. Here's who these two dancers have beaten to get here. Yeah. Here's what it means. Like you have that for like the football or anything. In the, if you watch any Olympics um, sport, when it's on TV, they have someone that explains what's going on. Like yeah. <laughs> it's their job to communicate this to the audience. And in that way, I think, you know, for me, the, the key to a lot of the shit in our community is like when you can make these things accessible to a wider audience and not accessible in a way of like, obviously in the way of like disability and stuff, but I mean, accessible just as in my mum can sit down and be like, all right, what's all this about? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. and within five minutes, she's like, ah, oh, cool. I kind of get it. Like with, that's the good thing about the Olympics. You know, you can watch a fucking curling, but like <laughs> if there's nothing else on, you're kind of like, and also you have something to, to, um, it always reminds me of the pitch that Clint made for that. Uh, is it boiled, boiled heads? heads. Yeah. yeah. If you have a story to get involved in, you you care ten times more than any other time. So, yeah. with what happens with the Olympics is you turn it on, you say, "Oh, curling! What the fuck is curling?" But then you see the UK flag and you're like, "Oh, but that's uh, that's our guy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, James yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking Bobson. Like, <laughs> I've never heard of him, but he, yeah, let's fucking go, James. Like, James Bobson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know." <laughs> I really like curling. I'm obsessed with Are you curling. Actually? Just, it's insane to me and I love it because it's so weird. Like, yeah, it is a strange fucking sport. Yeah. Um, like, but I'm yeah. really good at sweeping the floor. What should <laughs> I do with this? <laughs> I want to know how they developed that game. Like yeah. what was the start for them to be like, wait, we should make a sport out of this. Yeah. Um, you know what's also weird though yeah. about battles and like, for example, Boiled Heads drew a comparison between boxing yes. and dancing. Yeah. Like, in well, boxes, heads, you know about it? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. It was like a rain crew event where two people selected would go head to head for nine rounds, and they would have like a whole like video this is who this person is, this who is uh, who this Excellent. person is. They come in like a boxer, you know, when their robes, music playing, like making a bit more like of a an big event deal out of one battle about these people. So, we've done that a couple times. In and both were equal standing. Yeah. Well, that sounds more like. Sorry to interrupt, but it sounds more like UFC because in like boxing you have like the A side and the B side yeah. where the B side is kind of like, well, they're just going to get come to get knocked out. But yeah, in the, the UFC do the storytelling aspect really well where it's exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Like, right, here's the video. Here's why they're good. And here's why this battle is going to be so good. Yeah. That sounds sick. And you yeah. could even within that have like undercards and stuff like that, you know? Like, yeah, man. I, I think that's like, that idea is one of my favorite like event ideas that I've ever heard, I think. Yeah, we need to we need to bring that back. But But that came from us thinking about isn't it so weird that we have all these professional dancers and the entire audience are also professional dancers? You like, never see that with singers. Imagine you a never football see just, game and everyone yeah. in the audience. Is whole, a professional you, football player? <laughs> like it's so <laughs> weird. Why can't dance events like attract more people than just because when yeah dancers? it's and we have this excuse that like this this excuse of like oh because people don't understand us or don't get it, which i think is such a fucking cop out with anything where it's like a hip-hop theater show does badly and it's like oh but people don't get the style it's like you're trying to sell this thing to people like mm -hmm. if you're in your bedroom if me and leah are in my bedroom ciphering i don't care if in my bedroom ciphering why, why? i don't have that much room <laughs> we don't cipher in his bedroom we do other stuff oh every friday night. play playstation <laughs> um but like you know if we're just in my house like i have no need to be understood i'm just doing what i want to do like yeah. we're just having fun as soon as you step out and you want to sell this thing to people events need money to run you need ticket prices to pay the the prize right mm -hmm. and you need like audience members to pay for a hip-hop theater show like this all needs consumers anything that you're trying to sell needs a consumer so 
unless it's like a workshop for professionals. And I think, again, what we were talking about before, but like there's, I think we need all ends of every spectrum, right? So we need professional events. We need thing where like, this is a workshop. And this is also the problem with workshops is that they're too general. They're too much like, oh, I'm just anyone that wants to learn from me. Whereas I think some should be almost like, not invite only, but this is a high level professional workshop. Mm. Sonny's going to be teaching breaking, but it's not a fucking top rock and a six step. It's like, if you're on Sonny's level of breaking, he's going to teach you. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so not anyone can just yeah. go. And it's going to be one person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is like the same thing on the opposite level with like events and stuff. It's like, you need, we need to stop catering it to only us. Like as soon as we make it, and it not being funny, anything that caters to general audience is going to make it way more fun for me. How do you do that? Mm. Well, I think Firehouse, which is a nice segue, is a <laughs> good start because it's, I think it's just considering the audience experience, right? So, mm-hmm. Whenever I plan an event or whenever I have planned an event, I do a little like sounds uh, fucking Ponzi to call it a, a, an exercise. But I do, I do this exercise in my head. But I imagine I'm the audience so I don't forget anything. So I show up to the door. OK, who have I got taking the money? How much is it going to cost? Uh, what time do the doors open? Blah, blah, blah. OK, cool. I pay my money. I go in. How do I register for the battle? Is it at the same place? Is it another person? OK, cool. I've walked in. What's playing? Who's the DJ? How's the sound system? What What's the venue? Where am mm. I? Then I walk and I say, okay, cool. Like, what's what time does the first thing start? Cool, schedule. Then I'm like, you know, and I, I walk through it. And I'm like, what could I, what could happen? Oh, I'm bored. Oh, is there other stuff to be doing in the break? Is the host good? Is there stuff to buy? Where, oh, I need to pee. Where's the toilets? Yeah, anyway, basically like, um, the question you asked me was, uh, how do we do that? Yeah. So it's just like, like I said, doing this kind of thought experiment of like, what is the audience experience going to be? Not like, oh, what, how are we going to get the most like exciting dancers or blah, blah, blah. Like, I think that will happen if you provide an opportunity for them to compete or whatever. Like, that's kind of an easy, you do need to also think about that. But I think if you consider the audience experience, like, are you giving them something to do in the breaks? Not just thinking, oh, here, the judges are going to need 30 minutes to go and decide who their top mm-hmm. eight are. But what are the audience going to do in that time? It's not good. It's no yeah. good saying, oh, there'll be a break. Like, sometimes there's been events where, you know, um, you'll have like, let's say Debo, who I think is great at like general party atmosphere DJing. Yeah, He'll spin in the breaks. And it's like, cool, if you're going to provide this thing where people are, like you're going to say, right, Debo is going to spin in the breaks and in the breaks, this is the type of music he's going to be playing. And is it, is this even the type of event and is this the type of venue that facilitates us to party and cypher? Or is it so fucking hot and cramped that the minute there's a break, I'm out front? Yeah. Because if that's the case, no one, it doesn't matter what you're, what music you're playing or whatever, no one's going to stay and no one's going to enjoy those breaks because they're going to be sitting outside waiting for this thing to be done so they can get back in and battle, right? So it's like, you have to understand all these things in order to create a good event where it's like, what's going to happen? What's You have to kind of almost, to an extent, understand like human psychology in a way. Like, I'm sure these big festivals like wireless and stuff are thinking almost on like a primal level, like, People are going to come in. What's the first thing they're going to need to do, right? Our event is two hours away in the countryside. They've all been in a long car journey or a train journey. They might need to pee. So let's put toilets first thing, you know, or whatever. And it's like, you're thinking about how people are going to navigate your event. It's like playing that fucking... Like not the sim. What was that thing that the theme park builder? The game? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rollercoaster yeah. tycoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it. <laughs> and it's like those type <laughs> of things where up, you know these um, S curve like <laughs> things where it's like okay, people. Um, let's say in the airport, you know they have those big um, winding things to the gates, right, or to the um, passport control. Often people like or people I've been with or whatever have been like, oh, there's no one here in order for these to be filled up, right? But it's not about them being filled up it's about you not feeling like you stopped and stood still for too long Mm. so the longer they make you walk by that time the people are moving through so if they just had one thing you'd just be standing in a queue while everyone did this but in the meantime you're walking 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 so there's less time that you're standing still at the end right so you feel like the process went quicker than if it was just a straight queue or just a big open Mm. space where you could queue as you want and it's like these things which even if it, I know it's working on me, I'm like, oh, well, I'll still rather do this than stand still. It's like, yeah, yeah. it gives me a little objective, you know? So I think it's like these type of little things that people, the more they think about, the more you can kind of cater events to making an audience enjoy it. And then more people are, are going to come to your event. I guarantee like if Firehouse's thing stays consistent and like they do it over the next 10 years, that's the type of event that more people will come to every year than 
any of these small underground battles because like we were saying on last week's pod is like you know you're not bringing your mum to come and sit in a stuffy sweaty thing and, and sit on the floor yeah. and especially for a younger dancer you might need your mum to take you and she's just like at the moment like dropping you off and then leaving because she's like i'm not fucking going in there yeah. but imagine there was a space where she could sit and chill and maybe have a drink maybe buy some food maybe enjoy the fucking music that's being played maybe the host is like actually entertaining the audience instead of cussing people like i don't get why people why hosts do this where they're like yo listen yeah if you're not here you're not doing it yeah i don't even care dancers are always late blah 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 like if you're not here like it's like your job is not to cuss out everyone that attended your event it's to entertain and keep people engaged in the event and tell them what's happening you know so it's like the more we have these elements that make it exciting for the people like again i'm using firehouse as an example because like even the location is good yeah it's yeah, outdoor we'll and obviously this this kind of depends on you know the partnerships that you can build and stuff but with with these type of events it's like there's way more scope for that to grow and become into this showcases there's battles there's like the um solo performances there's a, the group stuff it's just it's interesting shit for people to watch there's a, a a fun little twist at the battle like okay the two winners win and then they have to battle each other and if you've like you said you connect with that person you're like oh they won but now they have to battle the other person that won oh mm. shit like i'm kind of engaged like there's something to to care about in the event then you're gonna attract normal people who aren't dancers and who, who don't aren't only there because they know the people or because this is what they also do right yeah. And that is, for me, is where the money comes from. Because if if you get the normal people in, that's where, that's almost endless. Like, there's a limited amount of professional dancers. There's not a limited amount of people that like to watch shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I really do. And I think, like, I think one of the things which you touched on with, with, that Firehouse did really well was the location. Mm. Like, like, London in the summer when it's super sunny and hot is banging like yeah. london is boom in the <clears throat> summer and like to have the event if you don't know was right next to tower bridge which is a huge draw for for tourism yeah. in london anyway right a place called the scoop i think right yeah, yeah. it's just like a little little amphitheater like right next to tower bridge and it's um, it's amazing because you've got like all the shops around you've got london bridge station about a fucking 30 second walk away from the venue and you get so many people well, at least I saw on the Sunday, there were so many people that would just walk past and come sit down or just be filming over the top and they're able to see the event and enjoy it properly because they had a huge screen above mm, the stage as well. Oh, sick. Yeah, it was really good. It was really well. well That's a really good thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was really, and yeah. they, the speaker system they had were on some of the stools outside of the uh, the immediate area. So I went to uh, go and stand by the river and the the stand um, of drinks or whatever it is they were selling had one of the speakers there as well. So it was so you could hear the host talking. Sick. So it's well done. And I think like one of the things I would have said is like, uh, oh, as um as an addition to them, because they had everything you're talking about. They had workshops in between, they had a uh, host talking, engaging the audience. Yeah. They had performances. And it was really, really, really well laid out. It was like very similar to the format of Champs, right? Mm. There's always something going on. And it's like, this, it's not a complicated thing. Like this has been done before and it's been done well. Um, the other thing I would say is providing uh, what you said on, you do on your live streams, right? So having a communicator to say constantly, um, <clears throat> oh, and if you want to learn from Marvel, blah, blah, they're going to do a workshop at so-and-so place yeah. on this day. If you want to come see these people perform, they're going to be performing at so-and-so what on this day. And I think keep having points of interest is the only thing I would have said in terms of making the event a bit more palatable for the general audience is keep having things that you can you can say to the audience over and over again where they can say okay cool well where can I follow up on this mm. like and the only reason I say that is because when I was at the art fair the big thing was well where are we going to see you again where mm. are you making more work do you have and the thing is social media cool and it's like it's very easy with art because they just want to look at it but if you want people that want to get involved in more street dance things or whatever <coughs> the idea is to I think is that's use that as a, an opportunity to um, communicate and advertise and engage and draw more people to other places. So, it's like, so the end result isn't the, the day, mm -hmm. but the, the end result is to keep building on these for, for future events. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also to care more about the thing itself. So maybe even like an mm. explanation of like what popping is or what hip hop is and like who, why the judges are choosing who they're choosing, like a little like, yeah, 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 yeah. maybe it's even like to give the judge the mic after each round and be like, oh, can you talk us through what you just thought or these type of things? Because it's like, the, I think uh, kind of going back to the Olympics thing, but like one thing that switches people off immediately with art is, or with competitive art is when 
it's very nuanced and very like you have to really know what you're talking about in order to be like well this b-boy technically be this b-boy and a normal like my mum's watching and being like yeah but how could b-boy junior lose to menno yeah because b-boy junior held himself up on like in this like there's how, i don't understand that's way harder than that and it's like you have to understand the nuances of the style in order to do that so what you need is a way to make my mum or whoever, I keep talking about my mum, but like- No, but you're right. It's a really good reference of a, of a type of person yeah. that is familiar with competition, sure. is familiar with platforms like the Olympics, understands that there are such things as break-in, yeah. isn't uh, ignorant to it because they would have grown up when it was popping off back in the 80s and whatever yeah. and 90s, but has no concept of what it is that we're trying to achieve <clears throat> in this dynamic here. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, and I think it's like, what happens is people get switched off because they're like, oh, I really like that person. Oh, he lost. Oh, okay, well, all right, there's yeah. another battle. Oh, I really like this person. Oh, oh, well, they lost too. Yeah. Okay. And then they just think, they feel alienated because they're like, well, I'm not, I'm clearly not getting this. So uh, I'm going to put something else that I get. Oh, here's football where if the ball goes in the goal, it, like, they win. <laughs> yeah, like, cool, yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. Like I can pick a team and I can just watch them. Like the more they get the ball closer to the goal, I'm pretty sure they're the better team, you yeah. know? With this, it's like, okay, you can do crazy shit or you can do cool stuff or whatever, but you might lose. And if you have some way of kind of breaking that down to the audience and making them feel like, no, no, don't go. Like, listen, let's explain to you. Let's make you part of this. Then they're going to they're gonna be more likely to stick around. And I think we focus a bit too much on the wrong things. Like, I would focus more on this audience experience. And I will as and when I do another event. But, like, I would focus more on that than, like, with boiled heads and stuff, than any other parts. It's like, yeah. you know, spending loads of money on, like, guest invites and blah 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 whatever like i'd be i'd take a lower level battle over like sacrifice an audience yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah I, I once brought a friend to a battle i don't even remember what it was but it was uh, like a small underground battle no idea how anything works not a dancer not anything artsy so i brought him and first he was watching the battles and he was like having a great time then there was a break and everyone started dancing and he was like yeah you feel like awkward. treated it like a science experiment like what are all these people doing so yeah he had no idea what to do but i think also you need to cater to your, towards your audience but also most battles cater towards the best dancers and like leave out this oh, giant that, range of, point, yeah. of dancers this that is like because oh, this is a really <laughs> like i love this mm. idea someone from rain said why don't we do a battle <laughs> and the loser goes through <laughs> <laughs> so that way when you're just a beginner you don't just get to do one round and you're out and you leave and you have to train for like five more yeah. years before you get through the next round he's like Every round, the worst one goes through. So the person that needs the most training <laughs> gets the battle again. <laughs> like does the most. I think but, that's a genius idea. You know, I think like this is and and not to like single out this event, but summer dance is an example of this for me, right? Because I love watching it. I watch the live stream. It's a great event. Probably, maybe not so debatably, like the best event that we have in the world at the moment. Like the thing that's the the peak for, especially for European dancers, let's say. But. Summer dance, what pissed me off is when I saw the prelims and they're doing two people dancing at the same time, right? Yo. Yeah. Because in that event, imagine you have international people from all over the world. And this is like not just summer dance. There's a lot of places that do this. Like they focus on, the, they cater to the best dancer. And actually the podcast I did with Manny, we went in on this topic actually. So scroll back and have a listen if you want. But basically just to recap on my point was like, if I fly all the way across the world, pay my entry, pay my thing, blah, blah. This event is being paid for by the audience and the people that enter the prelims. Yeah. You have a very minimal amount of top level dancers, but yet they're the ones that get multiple rounds. They're the ones that get to go get called back and they get to do this. They get to speak on the mic. They get to go again. And I get it that also without the top level dancers, it's less exciting and fun. But if I've paid all this money to get in and the 500 people that are entering hip hop are paying for the fucking prize money, don't make me dance at the same time as fucking Alex the Cage and no one's watching me because yeah. they're all cheering him and I'm just there doing my best. It's like, I get it that I don't matter as much in air quotes because I'm not the one that's going to progress through the... <laughs> but I'm not going to progress <laughs> through the competition as, a, as someone that's just going to enter prelims and not get through. But uh, as a whole, these are the people that you want and you need to come back every year because mm -hmm. the top level dancers, you can, if those people don't come, there'll be other good level dancers that you can invite. But if on mass, these, these prelim dancers don't show up for your event, like you ain't paying for the judges 
or the, the the venue or whatever without them. So I think this thing of just dismissing the prelims as a, as a, all right, well, let's just get this shit over with. I fucking hate prelims. I don't like watching them. I don't like doing them. I, I, they're boring as shit. But that's the thing that you need to spend time with to make those people feel included. And this is why I liked, let's say, like Unleash the Groove, where I, I didn't like the cypher prelims at all. This is a third podcast in a row I've said that. But... <laughs> I no. like that they did top 32 in every style. Whoever run that event just like. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> come on. Come on. No, no, I did say good things about it. It was a good event besides the Cypher prelims. That's four times. Um, <laughs> Wait, what did you not like? The Cypher prelims. Um, they did top 32. So more people get to feel included. Even if some of those people wouldn't have made the top eight, and they definitely shouldn't have made the top eight, but they get to battle a few terms. They get to feel like they're part of the thing. And, and this is something they taught us when we, I did events in uni is like with sports, we had a whole module on sports events. And they said, one of the things is the more people that feel included in your event, the more they're going to come back and care about your event and pay money for your event. That's why stuff like UDO has like all the different categories, trophies up to how long and then medals all the way down to like fucking 15th place or whatever, because everyone is feeling like, oh, I, I achieved something at UDO this weekend. Yeah. Whereas in battles, eight people feel like they achieved something. And even then, barely. Like you kind of feel like you achieved something, but unless you win, you're the only person getting a prize money is the one that, that wins. Yep. Everyone else is like, oh, well, why did I waste my time coming here? Yep. You kind of feel like. So I think it's like this thing of like exactly what you said is like almost that the, and you know, of course you're not inviting like top level judges and, and athletes to judge and battle in your event without taking care of them. You need a green room. You need like mm. uh, water and all these things, like good snacks for the judges. Don't fucking give us crisps. Um, but you also kind of need to think bottom up in terms of catering. Yeah. The audience pay on a lesser extent, the prelims and the lower level dancers, they pay. And this is the bulk of your income from an event. The rest is, is this, it's the top of the pyramid. So you kind of need to make your catering in that pyramid as well. But it's very hard to find that balance because sure. say you do a 32, which like um, top 32 goes through. Yeah. Great for the top 32. Very boring for the audience to sit through eight hours of prelims and then like rounds again. Yeah. So I always, I almost feel like the pre-selection is an event. And then for paying audiences that aren't dancers, maybe they come the last two hours. You know, when you go see a show, you, you sit yeah. for two hours and that's kind you don't, of You're like, not there for the fucking tech run. Yeah. <laughs> oh my days. You don't want to sit there for 10. Some events go on for 12 hours. Yeah. I'm bored and I love dance. This is what I was going to say to you about um, what did you think of the setup of Battle Bad when you went about having the prelims on a separate day completely? Yeah, I liked it. I mean, the whole experience was cool. As a, because I'm, obviously I went as a dancer, so it was cool. So the, yeah, the we had a separate day and a separate venue for the pre-selections, wasn't it? So it was quite interesting. So we went there, um, and we had to do two rounds for uh, pre-selections. So we had to. Oh, do, really? Yeah. So it was. Huh. Um, you do your solo. <laughs> Shows how far I got in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only did one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the judges were on a break when I did my prelim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we had to do um, we had to do our uh, solos. So we do our pre-selection solos, like 30, 30 seconds to a minute. I can't remember how long it was. Um, and then after that, they pick people to do battles. Uh, so that's when I battled Gator. Uh, um, true, yeah. But they didn't pick a winner. They just wanted to see um, who was best at battling, oh, right? Oh, true. So me and Gator both went through to the battle days. Right. So this is something that, uh, just to touch on the, the battle prelim idea, I don't remember seeing it but in the top styles just let me be very specific in the top styles European scene. I don't remember seeing it before Eurobattle did it. Yeah. I don't remember seeing it either before. Eurobattle. I might be wrong. Someone like Kev is probably like, no, I saw it in 1922, but like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like actually the first, yeah, anyway. Um, but the idea being is like, so just for people that again, catering to our audience, um, the people out of 500 dancers, or even after that's 50 dancers, the judges need to pick a top 16 or a top eight. So one way of doing that is everybody goes one at a time and just dances and then they write numbers or scores and then pick eight or 16. Now, another way to do that is to have it formatted as battles. So it's like you go, then you go, and then we, you leave the floor. You go, then you go, you leave the floor. I'm still looking at the overall picture of everyone, but I'm choosing out of everyone I've seen, regardless of who they went against, my top 16 or top eight. So what you're saying is like they did the norm, they did two rounds of that. So the first round was everyone does one round. Yep. Then they picked a select group from that. So let's say they picked out of- they Cut it in half. 
Yeah, so out of 100, they picked 50. Yeah. Then they brought those 50 back to do the same sort of prelim thing again, but facing each other. So you feel like you get to, like, you got to battle Gator, who, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for you, but we kind of grew up seeing him as one of the, like, yeah. the dopest guys in his era, you know? I remember, was it him that beat Salah or something? And we were like, what the fuck? When Salah was at the top of his, I want to say it was at, like, Funkin' Styles in Germany. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, so that's a sick, like, you feel already good because you're like, oh shit, first of all, I got through something because you don't know that, yeah, still 50 other people got through, let's say. Yeah. So maybe it's still like, yeah, well, I deserve to be in the top. Well, you got to the top four. So it's like getting to the top 50 out of 100 is not a great yeah. thing, but you already feel good about yourself. You're like, oh, cool. I got, I got announcers getting through. Then you get to Battle Gator, who's someone's sick, and you both go through. Yeah. So it's like, you already feel great. <laughs> and this is like the first day and it's a way to like consider the audience thing. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I didn't know what else to say. That was, that was it. But I mean like- You were explaining what happened because you said the first day you did the Oh yeah, rounds. yeah, sorry. Yeah. So the next day what happened is that, like Lou said, it, it's like a tournament knockout stage, right? So it just whittles down half each time, right? So 64, 32, 16, eight, whatever, right? So we went to a top uh, 16 uh, the next day. And so what would normally happen is that when you go for a pre-selections, the judges would pick the best 16 dancers, put them through, and then they would seed them, which means they would pair them based on their abilities on the day uh, to get the most uh, uh, balanced battles that you would have, right? Um, however, they already had eight guests, so what they were doing was they were putting uh, eight through to the top 16 to match and battle the eight that they already had there. So then what we did is I battled the guest ATN. So I beat him. It was a one round battle. Um, and then the next round was the top eight. So I battled Venom, beat him. And then the, the next round was the semifinals, top four. Aki, I lost to him. And then finals, top two. Um, my, like, my only thing is that about this is that I think we're way... Like we're due for, a, we've been due for a long time, a different format to adjust a knockout stage. And I think, sit, and I think the first step, bye bye Jenny. Really say, say it one more time, say it one more time. That was the longest holdout for my high five. Oh man. Third wheel. <laughs> say it one more time, say it one more time. I think we've been due for a long time uh, or, or overdue uh, something that is way different than a knockout stage. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for that ride there. It's a cunny. If, yeah. And please the first can, time I realised that, that was when I, when I saw Undisputed 1 in, mm -hmm. in London. And what they did is they had, a uh, after uh, having a ranking, just like Kingdoms League are doing with Poppin at the moment and Hip Hop, um, so breaking, they did a ranking. So what they do is that at events each year, for the year, they would have uh, a bunch of organisers who ran different events around the world to agree that all of their events uh, contribute towards a ranking system of breakers, right? So they said, okay, cool. So if you win a certain event, um, you get a certain amount of points. And if you get to a certain stage in that event, semifinals, uh, quarters, whatever, you get a certain amount of points. And they reward consistency and performance and results in, in, the, in those events, right? So... You go to an event uh, and you get quarterfinals consistently, you will have a higher ranking than someone who gets to the finals or wins one event, yeah. right? Because we reward consistency in that aspect. So after, at the end of the year, they tally up all the points and then they have an event called what's Undisputed. Undisputed has the top eight or had the top eight, I don't know at the moment, uh, breakers from around the world that were on this ranking system. And then what they would do is they would first have a group stage of two groups of four and they would have everyone in that group battle each other and then get the most points. And the top two of each group would then go back, uh, come out of those group stages, then to have a knockout Is that stage. similar to like the World Cup and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. it's, it's similar to any, any kind of, um, <laughs> yeah. any competition you would have in sports, right? Where, where like, you would have these things of knockout stages, like, yeah. where it's so, like in football, they do the same, the same thing, right? Whatever. But yeah. you first need a ranking system, which is where I hope, I don't want to just assume, I hope this is what Kingdoms League are going to do. So they create yeah. a ranking system. I know they're, they're taking like a top eight of the ranking to a battle at the end of the year. I don't know the format of that battle. Amazing. If they, if like, I, and then if they're taking the top eight, I think if they were to do a group stage, because then not only is the, the, this rewarding thing from uh, dancers, um, where they get to battle more for being there, but then like, which is what they did at the semifinals, which I thought was brilliant. As a like brilliant concept. So the semifinals at the event, they'd, so um, they had knockout stages all the way, like you would normally, but at the semifinals, there was one judge throughout the whole way, which was Paris in the, the pop-in and Kashmir in the hip-hop. So what they had was four dancers uh, got to the quarterfinals. And then, so two dancers at a time would battle each other. And the other two that weren't battling would join the judge and then vote for their winner. 
And what would happen was um, there'd be a person on the side, Brooke, who would tally up the votes oh, as yeah. points for each dancer. And then that way the, the top two would then battle each other and win. And uh, whoever won that would battle the uh, winner of the hip hop or the pop and uh, respectively. And that kind of thing is way more, um, way more interesting as a, from a dancer's perspective because you get more out of your, your time for being there. And it's way more interesting from an audience perspective because there's a story to follow. Yep. Oh, that person has so-and-so points. And I think it was a quite a raw version at, at Firehouse because there are so many things you can do to tweak and, and adjust it. Yep. But the big leap in having something more interesting was already accomplished yep. by doing that, I think. Would you do something like that with Boiled Heads where it's like a league and it counts towards stuff? And Because is that kind of the deal with UFC or boxing? Like, Yeah, they have a ranking system. So they're, when they battle, it goes, yeah. Would you? At the moment, Boiled Heads is... That one battle, and we see it's about stamina. It's about who has the most You still most have rounds. it judged and everything? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. So I don't know. It could be. The only thing with, like, I really like the idea of ranking and there being consistency, but it is hard for, harder for some people than other people to go to events consistently. Yeah. Some people yes. have to work. Some people don't have the money. Some people have to take care of their family. Yes. And if with this ranking system, they're going to be pushed down sure. the list. And yes. that feels a bit exclusive. Which I think would, would be a, a problem if it was only that. But if this is one avenue, I don't... It's like... But that's like kind of sports. It's like, you know, if you don't have time to join a Sunday league football team, you're not going to be able don't. to play Sunday league yeah. football. Like, yeah, so, it so it's kind of like that. Many, how many events yeah. are part of this like Kings League or ranking league? I don't think every event should be only and in the league. I agree. Not. I There's agree. like more out there than just that league and then also you know you need we we spoke about this before like how do you judge this if this is one league then certainly in that one league there's a certain set of rules to judging. follow judging oh good just so just before we carry on the, the judging part i thought that abe had a really good point yeah. on, on how you're solving this is that you reward winning more mm -hmm. so at the moment as far as i'm aware in kingdoms league uh you get 10 for winning Think eight so. for runners up or, or six, but it goes yeah. in like a two point yeah, uh, deviation yeah. each time right um i think you should reward there should be if you're doing two each time winning should be plus five okay cause I, like because i think there's a like i said it's super easy to reward consistency if someone's available to go mm. to each event right which is where we're, like, i think you kind of run into a very similar problem that we complain about all the time in terms of class system. If mm. someone can afford to do more things, yeah. then this they're rewarded more for just being able to have it rather than someone who, who has the ability to do those things. So, or train those cause abilities. it's 10 points for a win, right? I, I think so. I, I don't and actually know. Do you know but how many eight for a runner up? So that how many is it for like just entering the prelims one or two? Oh, do you, I thought it was, you oh. have to get points to pass prelims. I didn't no, I think you. you get a point for Cause it's like you're in the league. Is it? Yeah. So I think you get a point for for entering. So someone, so so depending this on how many events there are, <laughs> you could win an event or, or become runner By up. Just being there. But, but if you go for ten, but you could be someone who goes to all the events and doesn't get through the prelims and be, have a an equal or higher or similar ranking. That yeah, is or wild. even just get through to top eight each time. So I, I think just for participating, top eight you get two point, two points. Um, I think I could be talking shit, okay. but let's say if you do get two points in the top eight, this is why I agree with you. Cause it's like you do what five events and you have the same as someone that won one event. So what we're saying is that I can't be, you can't get a point for participating. Yeah, I think that you seems do. insane. That, yeah, that does do. seem wild. That, then yeah. I could win a popping like thing. Cause I'm just there. We could be in the rank. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah. That can't be true. It yeah, has to be for, for passing through prelims. I'm I'm pretty sure it's No, that. it can't be. I think it is. Do you have it your in the comments, you? people. No, no. <laughs> oh, my phone's over there. Oh, right. um, no, I think it is true. But I, this is the kind of, and I, again, it's like their first time doing it. So I think these are the things that need to be ironed out because let's say even if we talk about just getting through, if you get through five times, we're saying that that is equal weighting to winning once, which I hadn't thought about it in the way that you said it, where not only is that maybe not, the case that it's, I mean, in certain senses, like, all right, <clears throat> this is what we were talking about at the athletics track, where it's like, if that's the rules of the game, cool, like people can play the game. And it's like, yeah, technically you could win by not being a popper, but just showing up or whatever. It's like, if that's the rules you want to set on your game, cool, that's the rules you want to set on your game. It's like Street, yeah, yeah. street yeah, Fighter yeah, yeah. or something where I could beat you by bu button bashing, even if I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's like, well, okay, if that's how you want to set up the game, that that's possible. Yeah, 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 you're right. People are going to game. game the game, I guess, how they want to. But 
it is something to be taken in consideration. Like, yeah, what you said about a your point about competitively, what are we saying with this? Are we saying that yeah. showing up to ten events is equal to winning, winning one? If that's the case, then it's like, all right, fair enough, it's your game and that's how you want to set yeah. the rules. But like we can also say that we're like, eh, that feels a bit weird in terms of culturally. Like we don't usually equate those things, you know. Um, but the and idea is, like, I like the idea of the There's league. definitely something in there. But I think it's also what you said is really important. Like, yeah. if someone can afford to do it, whether or not it's like afford the time to do it or literally afford to enter because it costs money to enter yeah. every event and you have to be there. And if you're not from London, I think all these events are London based so far. So if you're not from London, you have to afford to travel and stuff. And there's probably oh, people yeah, that's that a good point. Yeah. Rewards people just, yeah. just being able to, yeah. And being yeah. able to do it. So it's like, I think what you're saying is good where it's like, you do have a massive upper hand. You should have a massive upper hand by um, winning by winning. And I think, you know, I think there's so much, I love this topic, but there's so much to be said about different formats and stuff. Cause even the idea of the league is like, you could separate between professionals and amateurs. Like when we get to the second year of the league, mm. the kingdoms league, I would say, and I, I have no idea how they're going to run it, but I would say that the second year of the league, you can only enter a certain category in each event. If you placed in a certain, like the top, let's say the people who are the top 32 or whatever, are the only people that can enter the the professional category That's like nice, next actually. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you have the Amateur Kingdoms League, which is anyone can enter and you get on the table mm -hmm. how you want, but then you the professional category is the year before, it's the 32. And if they don't show up and you only have eight people or seven people or six people, cool, just do the top six. That's fun. Do you know what That's I mean? That's really cool. Like, and then it gives them a personal opportunity. Like, So then you can... That's really cool because then you can have the thing. So basically, we, we were mentioning earlier about the idea of like different judging, which I assume is where we're going in yeah. this conversation, right? But yeah, that really covers the point of if you want, if you want someone, let's say, especially with something like breaking, for example, if you're some forty-year-old guy who did it quite well, um, but doesn't want to be competing with nineteen-year-olds who fly, yeah, right, mm -hmm. and they're professional b-boys who work for Nike, Adidas, Red Bull, yeah. whoever. But you want to do something casually, but still want to do something that's like a bit like I do five aside on Sundays. Exactly. But I still want to play football, but I don't want to play against someone exactly. who's going to just tump me up. Like for, yeah, you're for not. Have, you don't have fun playing football by going and trying out for Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> like, and not getting in. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not fun. Like so, and you you wouldn't do that because you're like I want to have fun with football. So you find the five aside or the three aside or whatever. That's cool, man. Yeah. So, that's so you a, need that. There's a lot of room for growth with this. Yeah, well, I don't like, want to be. Can I say one thing? Yeah, though. You know how say Sunday more than one thing. Say no. eight. Oh shit! <laughs> I will one, be saying one thing one and thing. then leaving. <laughs> no, but you know how Sunny said on your podcast that like, it's so cool that we're breaking. You get the absolute best of the best battle. I think he said the opposite. Oh, he said he it said wasn't cool. cool yeah. But f but for like <laughs> Lil John from sure. Ilford, that's great. Sure. Maybe not for Sunny, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah, think yeah. I think it's kind of a nice part of hip hop dance sure. that we do have that. Mix. Like, yeah, mix of you, you get to learn from the people you admire, which I think is valid in the non competitive league events mm -hmm. because it's like, all right, sure, yeah, you know, Ooh. these kind of cultural events. If yeah. we show it's like, oh, this is a fun event, like we were saying about the judging isn't taken too seriously, let's say, or the event isn't even catered for the audience or whatever, it's just a open, like, yeah. it's just like our, our normal jams that we have now. But it's like, yeah, Sonny's going to enter and my fucking yeah. mum's going to enter and then I'm going to enter and we're all just going to battle each other. Like, I'm going to get my head kicked in by Sonny. Then I'm going to battle some amateur. And it's all like, it's yeah. all just fun. But then, okay, cool. But then today, this is the Kingdoms League or it's the whatever league, it's undisputed. So this is where yeah. we take it seriously. And we don't need, you know, if, if you're Sonny or Karam and you make the choice to enter a, a fun community jam. But would they then though? Well, this is the thing because- They have the option to. They have the option to, but also- Like sparring. Mm. Yeah, and if you're a Red Bull sponsored athlete that's maybe going to the Olympics and you're Nike sponsored, it's like we're talking on way bigger scales than than like the fun aspect. Yeah. And it's like, what if Sunny enters one of these fun jams and God forbid touch wood, there's no word, but um, if he enters this and goes against some amateur who's never done, and then as Sunny's about to, because they don't recognize good breaking, as he's about to go into air flares, they jump in and try. Like, you know, did you see the battle at Outbreak where the guy jumped over Sunny? No. So oh, I feel like I've seen that. This well, week, also, just shout out to everyone at Outbreak. Like, there was a lot of yeah. UK, Ireland, and um, 
and other people like who were who were there like stephanie vanessa who represented other places but it looked like everyone killed at outbreak so shout out to them but sunny battled a guy called demand demani I, I don't actually know him to type but they battled and it was a sick i'll show you the round but it was fucking sick and like sunny was doing stuff the guy thought he finished his round and came in and started doing some flips and sunny kind of told him no i'm not done did something you know that thing he does where he and the head slides. and his, his head slides yeah, yeah, around yeah, he did that and ended up right by his feet and as he stopped it the guy did like a side summy over him and mm. got into his round oh it i was, did see that sorry yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it was fire but if that was an amateur who didn't understand that move that sunny was doing his capacity sunny's capacity what like and he he did that and then injured sunny now we're fucked because this is a guy who's making his living off breaking is sponsored by big companies is a, an olympic hopeful and if you crack sunny's head off the floor because you don't know what you're doing now we're like all right w now the conversation will come up why was this guy allowed to compete in the same yeah, realm yeah, as sunny yeah. and i think it's not the only aspect but i think that's one reason why mm. it, for me it balances out it's like all right if if sunny wants to cho choose to do that that's up to him but like let's say in the NFL, right? Um, on the off season, so when when NFL players aren't in training, either the preseason where they're training for the the season, or they're in the season. <laughs> I've said season so many times. <laughs> Basically, when they're when they're there's nothing happening, right? And it's their break. Let's say they are not legally allowed to train in a non uh, licensed facility. Oh, sick. So if you play for the Dallas Cowboys, you're not allowed to go and work out in a gym, in just some gym. You're not allowed to go play American football on some field. You're, it's like you're contractually not allowed because if you get injured playing with some losers or you're in a gym that isn't like maintained to a high thing and you drop a weight on your ankle, our team loses millions. So, and I think this is where, you know, sports obviously has an upper hand to stuff like what we do, but this is kind of my yeah. thing with that. I hear that. That's a good point, but I, 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 I kind of like it. Like, I hope I'm just worried that if we're going through just a system of that and everything is that yeah. we're going to miss out on that, like cross pollination. Cause yes, even sure. the best, best dancer can learn something from a six year old kid who's doing something, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're like, Oh, that's cool. And I'm, and it's inspiring. Like some of my, I've been super like lucky to get my head kicked in by some of my favorite dancers over the years Aww. you know and it's like to be able to be like oh i'm about to get smoked but still get to stand opposite someone who i watch on youtube yeah. all the time and be like all right well let me try yeah. like is is pretty yeah it is nice as well yeah i think but I, I like the league idea but there's yeah a little bit of ironing out because i do sure. think there's also a bit of like you're saying consistency gets w rewarded in these leagues but it already gets rewarded because say you're at summer dance you have 100 poppers entering the prelim the people that are going through are the people that you've seen because it takes understanding of someone's movement or like language to really appreciate it mm. like a good example is chili from rain crew he's one of my favorite dancers he's super weird and i freaking <laughs> love him yeah but in the beginning when he started, everyone was like, what is this guy doing? You know, like, what a weirdo. It took years for people to understand Same with people what like he's Salah saying. Or, yeah. yeah, so it takes so long before people get some validation and that influences judges' decisions. Like, what have they done before? What have they... Yeah, but I think this way, it's like a... It's a more standardized thing. Because, there again, this is leading into the, the judging conversation but like there's a lot of judges that will be like i shouldn't base it on anything like that i'm like you know and they try and you know this idea of being unbiased and they try and only look at it like what do i see in front of me what is this blah blah and it's like when in that way we're rewarding consistency in giving people the benefit of the doubt when they do weird shit right which is an interesting conversation itself i think people should always give people benefit. like maybe not in the competitive side but in terms of art in general it's like the difference between someone like doing so like there's plenty of shit artists <laughs> probably in the art scene there are people that can't draw but if you take that person and tell everyone they're a world famous artist people go oh that is really good though it's like it's just because the perception that you have of them yeah look people like don't get me wrong man i fucking love weirdos <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course right like they're 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 creating magic sometimes right but just because it's weird or different doesn't mean that it holds the same value or something else right like but this happens in art all the time, man. You see it with dancers sometimes as well, man, where they'll be offbeat or they're like, or they're like, I'm, 
I'm off beat, but I was just creating my own rhythm or something. Like yeah. So it's like, yeah, that can happen, but you didn't do it or whatever. But like, you see in art all the time, right? Like, th- so in, in just as a, a slight tangent, in the stuff I do, painting, drawing, whatever, fine art, there'll be a, there's a thing called conceptual art, which is basically uh, about things, about the, I- the art is about the idea. And the, I- the, the whole point of conceptual art is that you don't need to have a high skill level as long as the idea is good. And mm. the fact, the more conceptual it is, the less we focus on the actual execution of it, which for me is bullshit. <laughs> like it's just, for me, it's so ridiculous. Like I think like just because the idea is, is amazing doesn't mean what you're making is. The idea can be great, but if it's not executed well, communicated well, or, or done creatively or, or in an innovative way, or even just in a well-structured way, it's it's just a good idea. It doesn't mean the art is good. And I think like people conflate those things a lot. And like, but yeah, I don't know. Fucking chat yeah. about poops. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think like I think the consistency idea. It just needs to, like you said, it needs to be ironed out because I think yeah. it's a. I like the idea of making things standardized and like some way of like recording and and putting these points in in things. So I think it is good that like, all right, if you reach the finals like eight times in a row. And then every time you don't get any prize money, you get the cultural recognition that yeah. you're always in the finals, but you don't get recognized in any way because all of these battles are individual. And it's yeah, a bit yeah, like, yeah. you. and if, you, if you're missing out by this much every time, and it's like two judges versus one or whatever, like every time, it's like, fuck man, I'm really good, but I've got nothing to show for it. Whereas in something like the Kingdoms League, it's like, all right, yeah, you're really good. And now you have something to show for it because you're somewhere on a league that's going to get you something. And it's not just that, like Brooke has said multiple times that your points will transfer into money. Right, yeah, so, so like, there's something coming Exactly, like so you mm. get to the finals at every event, for example, but let's say you keep getting beat, whatever like that. It's not just like one of these, without cussing any event, like a BDO, UDO, or whatever, where you've got a trophy or some points or recognition, but you're getting actual... Uh, financial reward yeah. yeah of something on which like, as grown up some professionals we should, we appreciate yeah. right exactly this professional thing so the like again so as much as no idea is is exempt from criticism is what we're doing obviously like i said before man they've done a huge leap in yeah. creating something there that is that is more sustainable and that set that creates a, a better platform for professionals in our scene yeah like the people that are there consistently that consistently that are giving all their time to this that do uh, that educate, that perform, that teach, that judge, that just give a lot of their, their life to this craft. There is something now that is in place that is providing some kind of infrastructure yeah. for these dancers to to be able to participate in and work towards, which I think yeah. is sick. 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think like, yeah, for me, stuff like that and stuff like Bald Heads is like, this is... Yeah, Bald Heads sounds sick. This man. is the future yeah, of like... Back. Yeah, 100%. I think this is the future of battles. And I've always said this, it's like, I hate seeing dancers that I love and then they do one round and get knocked out and I'm like, okay, good. Glad yeah. I paid all this money to come to this fucking <laughs> event. Like, it's like, <laughs> I want to see you dance a few times. I want to build up, like you said, build up that connection. And I'm, I'm only building up a connection with the person that gets to the finals because they've danced so much. It's like, if I see you dance loads, like in that round robin thing where they tally up the points, it's yeah. like, even if you lose, I've seen you dance like eight times or whatever it is. And I'm like, I'm invested in you, you know? So even if you win one out of those eight, I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, really? You know? Like, there was a, the firehouse battle like Omni he lost twice I yeah. personally thought he, he won both his battles yeah. but it was cool getting to see more of him like yeah. I think he was on fire that day and you, you this is the thing is like the way our judging is set up now is like, like that's why again, you said nine rounds for boiled heads yeah nine this is why I love nine. like that because all that we've we're, we're um, rewarding in our scene at the moment for the most part is who can show the best round the quickest like who can who can do their best stuff in 30 seconds or 45 seconds right. once right and it's like that's a skill for sure to be able to just deliver oh, okay. and to be able to pull it out going, yeah. but there's some dancers even like i thought this way more in hip-hop because i'm now at a lower level in popping but i also feel like this in popping is like there's some dancers that i think you can beat me if it's one round in the top 16 for mm. sure almost every time but if we did nine rounds i'm gonna beat you because I've got yeah, more yeah, stuff. Yeah. I can separate my rounds. I've got years of yeah. experience. I've got stamina that you don't have. I've got like battle. I know how to like structure a narrative across 20, 30 minutes. Whereas 
you know how to deliver a 30 second round but do that nine times in a row and we start to see some weaknesses absolutely yeah you get dancers in events right like any style where you're like oh if i get you first round that's stress yeah but if i get you by the quarters or semis like it's because you've oh, already yeah i'll move through you yeah yeah we easy. start to see the cracks the more you go through yeah. so i think it's like you know that that thing that i think i have in certain small situations will never get rewarded and that's you know that's fine that's the way the game is at the moment but i think these different formats will allow different people to um to shine in different ways that's why i think seven smokes are cool it's the only difference yeah, that yeah, we have yeah. is the seven to smoke. that's seven the only other format because yeah, yeah. it's like you know now you start to see like who can fucking deliver eight rounds in a row or yeah. whatever you know it's like and it's a tactical thing of how do you i had to do i won a seven to smoke in um swindon and like it, i was quite surprised that i uh shout out to clint because he judged and voted for me um but i had to because i i it was like three battles that happened before and then i one on the fourth one so from there i beat all seven in a row my stamina fucking sucked buttholes and i was dead by the end of it but what i had to do was separate all of my rounds into different things so it's like because i know i don't train enough to have like a massive repertoire but i was like right i'm gonna do an entire round of waving an entire round of this an entire round of lines and tuts an entire round of blah 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 so it's like because I have enough of each thing, I know I can separate them so that each round is still full of stuff and it isn't being repeated. Mm. But it's like, you don't develop that skill unless you have an opportunity to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like different skills in different places. Some people are mad fit and like have great stamina and great like, like, um, I don't know, even like b-boys, like people like Spin or any of these professional b-boys, it's like they can go rounds, but if you get beaten by someone that's just like, has crappy stamina, but just because you did one round in the top 16, it's like... Yeah, fuck yeah, man yeah. like come on you you won't be able to breathe after the third round yeah, and you yeah, beat yeah. me in one like it's it, it kind of doesn't show every all the sides of everything i think and we're missing out on a lot of yeah. aspects i think anyway um so the main question for today is does lee think that there's a problem with judging in the uk dun dun <laughs> 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 Is that the is that gonna be the highlight for the I might yeah. I might bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be funnier if I bleep what you just said so that no one knows. But we know. Um Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> um <laughs> Good argument. Thanks. That that's all true. I wanna um, say. That's a wrap for today. And that's the bottom line. Um Okay, so let's talk about... Well, I guess the whole conversation started from... Um, Castro made a, an Insta story. And the thing is, I don't, I don't really want to get too deep into this because <sighs> there's a certain level of, like, I don't want to, like, on the pod, like, talk about kind of too much, like, fucking negative stuff and try and, like, make a big deal. I don't want to turn into, like, the fucking shade room or anything where we're talking <laughs> about things for the sake of gossip. Yeah. However, when something is brought up that is there's a deeper conversation behind it. And I think a good one, I also am at odds with myself because this podcast was made with the intention of encouraging long form, intelligent conversation. So in that vein, I guess is the right word. Um, I do want to talk about this. So he made a status that basically said the UK judging is atrocious and we do not, we at being UK people uh, do not possess the skills to. Should I read it out? All right, so which one is it? That one. This one. Yes. All right, so Castro. Who is Castro, by the way? Um, I, I'm looking forward to getting to know him more because I don't know much about him. Um, yeah. We have spoken about him coming on the podcast when he's here um, and kind of delving into more of his opinions and stuff. So, um, yeah, that will come. I, I don't know much about him. And this is what I don't want to speak on today is too much about him as a person or his background and history or his opinions because i don't know them yet so i'm gonna learn those from him and then we'll talk about them okay so yeah so for context uh we just had uh the firehouse event on the weekend yes. yeah the hip-hop and popping event right and uh, castro as far as i'm aware is a popping educator right yes. which is what it says as part of his bio on his instagram right yeah he's like a let's say like an academic, academic a dance academic yeah a, do a dance academic right in, in america based in america and he has connects with a few dancers over in the uk in here right and so we had uh the uh firehouse event where um uh, paris judged uh on her own until the semi-finals um and 
that she was judging alongside other dancers at that point, right? As always, there are um, differences of opinions of, of uh, what decisions were made and, and whether someone should have got uh, beat or whether they should have won or lost or whatever. Um, and after the event, for whatever reason, Castro, um, on his uh, social media, on his Instagram, put up on his story uh, this. The judging in the UK is absolutely atrocious. Y'all clearly do not understand pop into the extent necessary to sit in those seats and make calls on who won or lost. As stated before, when I come back next year, judging workshops are happening because what the fuck, lol. So, here's the thing. He didn't say it was about Firehouse. No. He has said in a couple of comments that it wasn't just about one battle. Which makes sense even from the context of that. Which yeah. it seems to be a series of events yeah. and this is like the straw that broke the camel's back. Yes, it does seem like this was factored in to, this event was factored into, there wasn't just coincidental that there happened to be a battle on the weekend. Yeah. So I guess the thing is, well, first of all, it kind of got people's, a lot of people's backs up. Um, just a little bit. Yeah, it, 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 it did irritate a lot of people here. Yeah. I completely understand why. Because regardless, and just to say this, first of all, I don't think anyone in this country or anyone in the battle scene in the world is against things being improved or things being... For what you know, we might differ on what that means, but for things for yeah. people to tr care about the battle scene and try to make things better and to improve the way we do things, like we've just been talking about in, in different situations, I don't think anyone's against that. As long as there's you know, people can say, I don't want to go to that event if that's being done that way and stuff like that. If that's fine, you know, if that's your choice, you don't have to come to every event that's being done in a certain way. There's a lot of b boys that don't like the Olympic judging thing, they just want a cultural jam where they can just cipher and whatever. Fine. Um, I think I get why people got their backs up. And I think it's my main point on this is the delivery of these things. Because I think if Castro's uh, kind of um, motivation is that he wants to improve the judging across the world and he wants, it sounds, if you strip away the layers, like he wants to help the UK. And he wants to help us to, you know, we, even with the judging workshops, it's like, okay, well, you want to come and bring some knowledge here and teach it. We love that. <laughs> like a lot of the knowledge that is in the UK is because people traveled and because like we had, I don't know, the boogaloos come over here and teach. So then people learn from them and pass that knowledge down or this, but or like a lot of B-boys came. Remember when Ronnie came and taught her in Watford? Yeah. Like B-boys come and just like offer their time and teach and blah, blah, blah. And then that knowledge gets passed down. And that's how the scene evolves and and travels across the world right in essence a great thing um so all of that being said i think the delivery is important with anything that where you want to make change because if you're just saying stuff that's your opinion fine but and you just want to express yourself cool and people are going to like that or not like that but if you're trying to get people to listen you have to think about the way that you're speaking. And I think the way that this message was delivered is what got a lot of people's backs up. Not so much the message itself, because we have people here talking about judging systems. Kev's been talking about judging systems for years. And Kev is not someone who hasn't got people's backs up before. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. it's not like a brand new idea, you know? It's not like he's just come over and been like, no one in the UK should ever pop. And we're like, wait, wait, what? Like, it, it's, oh, you want to improve the judging system? This is something we're familiar with. Cool. I don't think anyone has a problem with that. I think the issue is saying it like that. And a little bit as a side note, the fact that if it's about the firehouse battles, the battles aren't online yet. So if you're in America, how do you know about the judging? That's all I'll say. But if... I'll happily say more if you like. Yeah, I don't, I'm not not to stir no. If up that shit. if that makes you want to say more, stir then it up. Yeah, we, well, we can always edit later. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah, what well, like? Oh, there is. Um, yeah, well, look, the first point you made about like this, the approach. Like you're right. Like we all give a shit about the scene, and we all give a shit about contributing to it, which is why that firehouse event even happened, right? It's, and if you went to it or you saw anything about the event, 
you would see that it's clearly not just a, a thing that some people have decided to put together overnight. <laughs> yeah. like it's, it it's Sh- shout out to Emily Labhart, is a producer. Oh, mm. brilliant, right? Like, and, and everyone involved. Like, it was a fucking good event, man. Like, it, it was really well run. And you're right. Like, if, if you weren't there, how did you know about all that shit? We'll get to that in a second. But, like, the, the main point is, like, the fucking approach of this guy, man, is like, like I haven't heard his opinions and I'm going to wait to hear what he has to say about judging before I, I have any kind of opinion on that or, or, or rebuttal or towards that. But the thing you can critique straight away is the approach, man. You do not cuss an entire country's worth of fucking dancers and then use that cuss to advertise the fact that you're having a workshop and expect them to pay for it. Like, that's just not the approach, man. Like, like for sure, that's not how you do things, yeah? Like, and the people that you're going to get to your, come to your workshop, if any... I assume are probably going to be the people that are already a part of your bubble and the other people that if they come at all are not going to be the people that affect change, man. There are a bunch of people here that are doing shit like the people who ran that fucking event and judged it and the other people that are... And mostly the people whose backs were got up are the people that have been working their asses off to make change. To make the changes in the scene. They are the scene leaders. So like Brake, Sean, Marvel, Brooke whoever else that got their backs up about this are all the people that have been leading the UK scene that have been directly either inputting and or affected by the fucking guy that created the judging system for the Olympics. Like this isn't, this isn't the first time we've heard about judging needing to be developed, you know, like it's like, come on, man. And, and then telling us that we need to come to your work. We need to pay you to, to learn from you is ridiculous, man. Like that, like that, that ability to communicate needs to be improved if you have something that is of value that can help us, for sure. Because like, no one is against learning from other sources. I, mean, I assume, anyway, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone and else, right? No matter how, and on the flip side of that, no matter how intelligent, valuable, whatever you are, you're not, um, you're not exempt from communicating well of course, and bro. nicely. It's like, you might come, I might be starving in a desert and have need water or whatever, you know, I'm like dying of thirst and you might have the only water source for 60 miles, but don't come and kick me in the face first. <laughs> like, yeah. Just say, do you want this water? You clearly are about to die. Like, cool. You don't need to just boot me in the face and be like, well, yeah, well I have this thing that you need. So take this. Yeah, It's just ridiculous, man. Like, and it's like, and just so there's no confusion, regardless of the context of what it is that you are trying to give or, or impart or help with, Again, you're not exempt from communicating, but if you came over, you're trying to sell fucking cookies. You wouldn't be like, yeah, you fucking, you're all shit at baking. The British Bake Off sucks. You need to come to my cookie shop and buy my cookies and learn how to make my shit. And it's like, bruv, what are you talking about, man? Like, yeah, it was just a ridiculous approach. But the thing is, there are dancers in this country in terms of like, how did you even know about the event? Is that like, I think part of the reason that we, like people in the scene got the backs up as well, is that we assume that there are some people in this dance scene that, that we embrace as UK dancers that are communicating directly with Castro to complain about things and using Castro as a voice to be able to express any gripes about decisions that they're unhappy with. Which for us is not the ideal way to do things if that's the case. That's because it it's, you know, I have a lot of issues with the UK dance scene. I think I contribute at least an equal amount that I complain about. Publicly, I contribute more. <laughs> I complain way more behind the scenes than I do in public because at the end of the day, I love the scene. I love everyone in it. I, this has given me my best friends, my life. Like I care about this fucking scene and this country and the people in it a lot. Even the ones that I don't get on with, I'm like, I'm glad you're here con- contributing your artistic shit to the to the scene you know so i think when you have that a bunch of people who have spent decades being here and you know being a part of this thing it's like for someone to not at least speak to us first like and you know it's not like some gatekeeping thing oh you have to go through us before you talk to anyone else no but it's like you know if i'm if i'm gonna I don't know, talk about events or something. And I'm, there's someone else cussing events that I'm, I'm telling them like, oh, the UK events are shit, blah, blah, blah. It's not the first time I've raised this in the UK. Like I've been talking about my issues with dance events with all the people that run the biggest dance events. Like 
I've spoken to Rob about it. I've spoken to fucking Kimberly J back in 2008 about it. I've spoken to Clara about my issues. Like I know I've spoken to all these people and made my feelings known. Everybody knows where I stand. I have the podcast, which is, you know, out here every week. So my feelings have been made known. So now if I go and talk to other people about it, it's like, well, yeah, he has been saying that. We do know that he feels like that. But if you're not making your feelings known, but you're making them known in private, it's a bit like, hey, like we... You can come and talk to us. Whoever it is, it might be multiple people, but it's like, you can come and talk to us. You know what I mean? And like, we can all try and help change these things together. If yeah. I say, if I go to like Clara and I'm like, listen, uh, when you run Just W UK, I don't really like the way this has happened or whatever. Clara might be like, oh, cool. Well, let's, well, tell me your ideas and I'll maybe try and implement them for the next one. Or she's going to maybe know and ask more people, you know, and say, well, what about this? Maybe even something like Boiled Heads came from Clint or you guys, having conversations and people telling you their issues with events. So it's like, we want to change a scene and we want to improve things. But if you don't tell us your opinions, if you're, if you're from here and you're part of this community, then how are we going to make those changes? You know, and it just feels a bit like, oh, well, we wouldn't have reacted badly if people had said this to us. If someone had said, uh, you know, hey, like come up in person and been like, hey, I'm not really a fan of the way this was judged. Or spoken to Brooke and been like, you know, you know uh, I don't like the way this was judged or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's very different feedback is always welcomed yeah. but that's not feedback that's like i i'm kind of echoing what lee says it was kind of a shameless plug and it was you need to listen to the us or whatever like the uk has a really good popping scene like i'm not a part of him saying it as an outsider but we've got shit going on here so to just say oh all of the uk they need to work on their judging i just see it it seems a bit unproductive and it's not how I would give feedback about something. And then also, when you're running an event and you're hiring a judge, you're basing that on your experience with that judge or your, your, you like what they do. And if you agree to enter that battle, you say, all right, I'm going to enter this battle and I'm all right being judged by this judge. You know who is the judge at events. So to then... And you can also contact any event organizer beforehand and say is there a criteria how is you can contact the judge and ask them how they're going to be judging you could ask on the day like there's a million preemptive moves that you can make to clarify these things and then not enter there's okay. something to oh, no, sorry, okay. sorry there's something to say for like having those rules like out beforehand or like the sure. judging criteria this is what we're going to be looking for at this event that might it's diminish. definitely a shared responsibility yeah that might diminish some of that feedback but if you're not happy with a result ask the judge like why did you vote for them most judges if they're good judges know exactly why they didn't vote for you sure you might not agree with it but it's a biased system you know anything you judge that is artistic there's some form of bias there you can never get rid of 100 percent of the bias in a sport like or art it's more like, like dancing like setting the goalposts i guess okay so this is what we we're talking about earlier right yeah. where it's just like and this is where i think we deviate because like this is where i would disagree so that like there are like say like the three points right of like uh, entering uh, us and judges opinion and having the, this, these biases right like entering events if your only option is to enter events where you believe that all of the judges are biased like what are you, like really what are you meant to do just not enter events mm. like like we're criti like we're criticizing events now I think it's fine to cri criticize I think I actually think it's fine for Castro to criticize UK judging agreed same for, the same thing I said earlier is about the approach the, the yeah, his in a approach better way. yeah his approach was atrocious it's mm -hmm. like but the idea of critiquing the judging system is not no right? and we do that ourselves and everyone you know like we like I said before it's like we know yeah, uh, <laughs> we like, know there needs to be improvements. Yeah, I do. Like, like I don't agree with the decisions that all of the decisions, sorry, that were that um, that happened at the firehouse event in terms of popping, and even some uh, one or two of the hip hop maybe as well. Um, but if I have, if I want to correct for that, I'll go and speak with Paris. I'll go and speak with firehouse, the organizers, the producer, whatever, whoever, however they run the events. Yeah. Um, the setup. I'll go speak with Cash or whoever who else judge, but. If it's just a case of my opinion or I feel a bit hard done by or whatever, okay. But if you do want change, I like I don't believe it's it's a case of maybe you were inferring this, but this is how it came across to me, but that these are the events, so you either go to them and shut up or you just don't go to the events. No, I think it's what you said. Or I, that's what I think is like is it's the way of going about it. Right, okay. It's like if you're really like fucked like Yeah, don't yeah. don't shut up, but 
this is very like unproductive the way it's done now. Yes, I, and yeah, I agree. And I'm just there's making, more productive ways yeah, to do that. And I'm just making a point of the onus is not all on who are the judges. If you agree, put yeah. on an event yeah. and you want, um, I don't know, set some like this is what we're looking for. You, I want you to judge on this because right now it's all based on this person's opinions and everyone has different opinions. So if there's not a system in place or a criteria that they want that judge to, to judge by, yeah. then how can you then blame the judges? Not entirely the judges, but I, I agree. I, think, I still think you can um, provide, uh, um, put some blame on them. Sure. Right? Because they are the person doing the job and they have accepted the role of, of adjudicator, right? Um, so if, like, because there, there, there are some, I think, important distinctions to make. Like when I go to, and I go and judge UDO on the weekend, they, the event gives me a criteria and each, uh, each year, They'll How are UDO more advanced than the rest of the scene at judging? <laughs> but they basically, each year they give training as well on how to judge. So they make sure that your ability to um, judge by the criteria that they set is effective. And for any biases or, or, or mistakes, we can provide transparency on them and then correct for that later on. And when I did the UDO judge training, we did the training on like all the stuff, had some conversations, which was great, and then watched videos and we wrote down like what we would mark them on each thing and then discussed it. And if somebody was like wildly apart, it's like, okay, what are you seeing that we saw in a different way? Yeah. Why is that? Is that because you're wrong or is it because you think differently? Is there something to bring up? And a couple of times like I judged differently and I brought up um, a reason and actually people were like, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So it's like, we're all kind of learning from each other and figuring stuff out. But yeah. I think that's brilliant. And I think that's why Castro's critique and the fact that he's teaching judge workshops is a good thing. Yeah. I think the judge workshops is a, is a great idea. And I, I'm really down for like workshops on different types of things in the scene, like how to judge or how, even like how to fucking host or anything. It's like, yeah. these are all skills that we need and we need to be improved and worked on. It's not just about learning to, to dance, you know? But then Castro decides what the criteria are. Well, so yeah, this is the, the thing is like what, and this is kind of what I don't want to go into too much because I've spoken to him um, privately and he said he's happy to come on the podcast when he's here and kind of talk about it more at length. And for me, it kind of circles back around to the approach thing because yeah. my whole thing is podcasting, long form conversation, discussing things. If you're going to make a really inflammatory short form comment you've got to be able to explain it and talk like, you know, yeah. after two hours of talking, I have very rarely been angry with someone that I disagreed with. Me and you have had a lot of debates that we disagree completely. Yeah. Usually by the time we've spoken for two hours on the phone, which happens very frequently, <laughs> we're not pissed at each other. Yeah. We sometimes rub each other up the wrong way because the first inciting comment <laughs> is inflammatory from me or you. It's like- Sometimes you've got to have a good hook. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes. <laughs> hey, maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe if he's doing that. <laughs> maybe he's about to come up with the most fire podcast. Um, <laughs> but I mean, this is the thing. It's like, if I say to you, oh yeah, Dave Chappelle shit. You're like, whoa, 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 here we go. Two hours later, you might go, oh, okay. Like yeah, yeah, I yeah. completely disagree with you, but I'm not pissed anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, this is my whole thing is like, and, and this is, I think our generation and it pisses me off because people want to complain about like, oh, the kids don't know how to communicate because of social media. It's like, it's the fucking adults as well, man. Like some of you old people don't know how to communicate. It's like, you can do lives, you can talk. There's other ways to do it than little Insta stories and then get confused or whatever. I don't even know if he's confused. Maybe he expected it to rub people up the wrong way. But it's like, people are going to get annoyed when they don't understand your point fully. Even if they disagree at the end of it, if they understand it fully and what you're trying to say, then you're people are going to accept it a little bit more, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was also like not a dig at Castro. It's like, oh, you're going to decide the rules, but who is going to decide Right, yeah, this? just more of a question. You know, like... Oh, yeah, go on. Like, then it, it seems like almost a bit elitist, these people, because they've been in the scene for this long and they have this much experience, they're going to decide what the standard for judging is. Mm. And I'm just wondering that if that gets done, and I don't know this, but are we then creating this really homogenous style of dancing that gets rewarded in competitions because this is what we're looking for in judging and are we missing out on all those like really amazing dancers that might do stuff slightly differently and i hear your fact like there's some weirdos and they they have nothing to do with the style but there are weirdos that do the styles 
but are they going to fall out? Well, no. I think so. This is, I think that's definitely something that they've like Kev's spoken about it, but it's like he said that the system now doesn't do that, right? Like he said that the breaking system for the Olympics doesn't like uh, force everyone to dance the same, blah, blah. But that's not something that happened by accident, in my opinion. Like he, I guarantee him and Storm spent a long time trying to make a system that doesn't do a that. A decade. Yeah, exactly. So like longer than some people have been dancing. They've <laughs> yeah. been, they take, they took their already lengthy experiences to then think about this system. Like, yeah. And to like, to put forward the example of this, right? Because like you said, right, there is the worry that there's going to be standards. There is going to be yeah. uh, box ticking. There are going to be a point system. And if you rush creating it, that could happen. Yes, right? And there is this, this worry that you're just going to create this kind of breaking athlete uh, stereotype. Kind of like gymnastics in a way. It's yes. like you tick off the moves, you get marked for execution and difficulty and that's it. So you just get versions of the same moves. Right. So I'll just say this on the outset, right? Like, So I've spoken with Kev um, for maybe accumulated four or so hours about this 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 trivium system right this threefold judging system that they've created where they have a, a, a way to try and remove biases from dance right mm. so if you and i don't know it, the i don't understand it uh, in its entirety if you need to understand and speak to kev or yeah. storm right like it, it just it makes the makes most sense to speak to the guys that, that made this up and there are other people to speak about this as well right but these people will will communicate with you if you want to understand more. And that's the important bit. If you want to understand more, participate in the conversation and, learn, and, and yeah. do some learning on it, right? But I'll, I'll do my best to kind of lay it out and hopefully I'll, I'll lay it out very clearly. The point is that when you're judging something like a, a dancing, right? It's subjective, which means it's based on a person's opinion. It's not objective, which is away from your opinion, like some sports are, like football or basketball. Yeah, the yeah? ball went through the hoop. That means you get a point. There's no debate. Yeah, That's whether objective. Whether you're better or not. Whether you, yeah. be whether you like it or not, or whether, yeah. you, whether you think it should have or not, it went through and you get a point. In dancing, it's not the same thing. So in gymnastics, something where it can be subjective, right? Based on, oh, well, I like the form a little bit more because the toes or whatever, or the physiology or whatever. They create standards. This is the move, and it's how well you do that move. And you have to tick those boxes in breaking they do not have that for this system right it's not about standards it's not about moves it's not about points it's comparative judging which means that someone does something dancer a and then dancer b will come along and you're seeing how that dancer compares to that dancer based on what it is they've done at the time mm -hmm. right and obviously we need to judge them and understand what it is that they are doing and those things that they're doing are the values or the things that we value within the dance itself, right? So there are a bunch of things or a system of values or a set of values within our dances that we all agree on are important in the dance and all of them hold equal value. So well, that's, I think that's where the worry might come in and I'm not saying they haven't the, thought about it, yeah, but, but for people that don't know about it is those values that we, in air quotes, we all agree on yes. is like the worry immediately that, and I know a little bit, but not loads, but the thing that pops into my head as a question that would be asked yeah. is, well, what are those values? Is it, oh, I can do more air flares than you. Ah. You know what I mean? Or like, what well, are the values? And and I'm not saying, you know, obviously I can go and read this and I'm sorry, but for the sake of conversation is who like creates those values and if the culture changes and other things start being valued, does the sport of the culture change with it so for example like it takes it's really hard to change stuff in basketball so um there's some rules that get implemented and taken away and people it there's a lot of backlash to each um rule there's something that for the women's basketball they're talking about lowering the hoops to make it more entertaining to watch so there's more dunks there's this type of thing they sell more tickets yeah and yeah. people are it's just a fucking huge backlash both sides it's like why would you even not do that and why would you do that and and there's a rule about fouling like when you go up for a shot if someone takes up your space and it's to protect the people from injury yeah. but again it's like oh this is a new rule this is oh, it's a big change so it's like that's in basketball which is pretty much this athleticism and stuff has changed but the sport has pretty much been the same since like the 50s right yeah. culture changes daily yes so the question in people's head and the concern which again obviously can be uh, remedied by researching but just again like selling your product to yeah. the average person is the question is 
if this culture changes and shifts or is it only based on one like who should we base this on because in japan maybe they value different things than they do in denmark and then if the culture changes in 10 years are we going to be able to update this you know what i mean there's all these questions that i think would come up and i'm sure there are answers to it yeah there are answers yeah. to it and i mean i'll do my best to answer some of them right sure. so first thing culture has changed over the last 10 years would you agree or disagree mm. oh, exactly. right yeah cool and it took 10 years to make this thing so it's something mm. that they've considered over the course of the time where this culture has changed extensively so that already i would say is considered in that mm. i don't think they're adverse to the idea that the things that we do value may change as well cool. because it is subjective right it is subjective right but it doesn't mean you can't talk about it objectively we just need to agree on the parameters in which we're talking about it right and i'll use an analogy in a minute but from what uh, kev told me is that they basically said all right let's get a big whiteboard and let's write all let's write down all the words we can use to describe breaking and describe what we value in breaking without using breaking terms okay Right, so we can't use things like air flare, top rock, or whatever. Yeah. But we have to use things like flavor, or style, or storytelling, or stuff mm. like this, right? And then what they do is they get all the words together. Let's say they've got fifty words, and they go, okay, cool. Well, this this word is like it uh, means the same. Yeah, as this means the same as this. Okay, cool. And then so we'll, we'll we'll just we'll get rid of this one, and we'll just use this one. And and this actually can be better explained by this word here. And actually, if these two words uh, are, are combined for this word, then we have this right so they whittle down all the words and then they go okay cool so let's uh let's get all of these words properly or, or like or define them a bit better right so then instead of um storytelling they'll have composition mm. right so you may not necessarily tell a story in that as in the traditional aspect of beginning middle and end but you may have uh you may compose your movements in a round to have a beginning middle and end mm -hmm. right so you have composition and then they'll do this thing so it's like power for example whatever it comes under athleticism mm -hmm. and uh, uh stage presence or whatever comes under performativity or stuff like this you and know i i would assume that like even within those things that's where you still have to apply some sort of personal opinion because let's say like um uh yes. what's good storytelling right it, uh i'm trying to think of an example um I don't know, there's plenty of in, in film and TV, but like good storytelling is like, oh, you, you introduce a character, you have a start, middle and end, three act structure, blah, 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 whatever. That might be the status quo of like, what is, that's why Marvel is so formulaic because it's based on this very basically uh, agreed upon three act structure. Yeah. There's an inciting incident that makes something happen. The hero kind of goes through a thing. He goes to a point where he's going to fail and then he succeeds at the end right yeah. all marvel films have the same fucking structure and that's why people get annoyed with them then you get someone that comes along and makes something really weird like, like tarantino yeah or like m night Shyamalan, yeah. or even like way more artsy films and stuff so then it's like right if we're judging again i'm kind of playing devil's advocate here because i i don't 100 percent believe all the stuff i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> i very rarely do but <laughs> like if we're judging these two things against each other yeah again the worry could be oh this thing is what we think a story should be, but actually watching it in, in thing, I enjoy this way more because of the way it's done and the creativity. And even though it's bad storytelling, it still actually works. You know what I mean? It's like in theory is bad storytelling, but in practice, I completely understand everything. So then in a way that like, if we just put the umbrella under storytelling, I could actually vote for that one, even though it's like, you know, we're not, uh, we're not breaking it. We're not bringing it to like a gymnastics level yeah. where the gymnastics approach would be well that one was done in the way that i was told it was should be done yeah. and that one is done in the way that i was told it shouldn't be done that one wins whereas what i think you're saying and i'm kind of making it more layman's terms i guess is like there's two things let's say two movies marvel and then some weird m night Shyamalan backwards thing I like memento yeah uh, i don't remember memento but i'll i'll take your word for it but where you're like okay cool in pr like i just have to judge them on the storytelling of this yes. someone else is gonna or another category is cinematography another category is dialogue another category is yes. direction so in the storytelling aspect in practice this one i think is better so i'm still giving my opinion but just within frameworks so that i've considered everything because what could happen is i could look at the cinematography of blade runner 2049 yeah and be like it's fuck which I do as a biased audience member, <laughs> I say it's one of my favorite films based on nothing except for the cinematography. <laughs> I really hated it. Okay, right, there you go. 
and it's like I'm I'm being biased because I'm only looking at one of those categories. I'm looking at cinematography and visuals. That's it. And because that's so powerful to me, and because I have an investment in videography and filmmaking, I love the film just based on that one bias. But I think what you're saying is like it forced this system could force you to look at the other things. So if you said to me, Judge Blade Runner forty nine, and I said it's amazing. And you said, okay, cool. Now judge it based on its storytelling. Now judge it based on its cinematography, this, this, it's acting, it's uh, casting, it's this. Then I would have to go over the eight whatever categories and say, okay, yeah, overall it's shit. And yes. that's like, I think what you're saying is the judging thing. I can't be biased because you're forcing me to even out what I look at rather than just going, oh, I love this. Yes. So when you like when you're in a battle, right? And it's very rare that you reply to any of my theories with an outright yes. Yes. So <laughs> I feel great right now about my explanation. <laughs> yes, but right. So look, when you're in a battle, and just a very simple question is: if you take your shit seriously and you want to be a part of this ranking system, or you want to go to the Olympics or whatever, do you want someone that is judging you to tell you whether they like you or not, or to tell you whether you won the battle or not? Mm. Two very different things, right? When I get someone, or when you hire someone to put, uh, sit in a judge's seat, you're asking that person to bring their opinion, yes. But that opinion is, that is, is separate from what they're, they're asked to do. So their opinion mm. is built on their experiences, right? Their experiences of, and their preferences. In this, what they're doing is they're just, they're using their experiences to say, there was a discrepancy between dancer A and B in the composition of their round. Dancer A had better composition and this is why. Provides transparency, right? Dancer B, uh, there was a discrepancy between dancer A and B in their performativity, in their performance, right? And here's why. And you do this for each value that we've set and we've decided we'll go back to that in a second, right? So what you can say is if we're going back to films, yeah, you, you fucking hate a Blade Runner, right? But when we say, okay, cool, now I'll judge it based on its, um, its cinematography. So it's lighting, it's color grading, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a composition of film. So does, it, does one scene follow one nicely to the next? Does the cuts work? And all of these things, right, like, all, like maybe not specific film words, but if we say, does composition work or does the- in, Narrative, or, yeah, the story. Like it. is, there a, is there empathy within there? Or something like this, narrative, for example, some of this. Things that we uh, value that, that aren't specifically filmmaking terms. Objectively, do those things work regardless of whether you mm -hmm. enjoyed it or not? And that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is that we're saying. So then you can have something like Blade Runner, Memento, I haven't seen it, or you can have like a Tarantino flick, or you can have a Marvel film, which are all structured and, and executed quite differently, but can be judged quite fairly against each other. Mm -hmm. So you can say that actually, even though I enjoyed Ant-Man more than Blade Runner, Blade Runner, based on this criteria and this set of values, mm. I believe is a better film. And that doesn't say that you didn't like yes. Ant-Man more yeah, than Blade yeah. Runner. It just says that thing is. And it doesn't mean that um, whoever made Blade Runner, was it A24? Uh, well, I know that um, it was Denis Villeneuve, okay. the director. Oh yeah, 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 who did uh, Arrival as yeah. well. It doesn't mean that he's always gonna make better films than Marvel. No, it's it just, just in that moment, that, that one is. Yeah, yeah. and the, the point of the whole, uh, having a whole uh, system of, of judging, at least for me anyway, is to remove these biases as much as possible. You're right, we're asking for your expertise. So we are asking for your experience to be able to come and do this that are individual to, to Luke's mine or whoever else is. But what we, we are saying is that, look, can we agree that performance or performativity is important when you're battling someone in an environment? If so, brilliant. Can we agree that composition of your round, can we basically, does what you're doing make sense? Can we agree that there is an aspect of athleticism to this dance, that creativity is important, that progression from the foundation, that you are doing the style itself is important? Can we all agree? If we do, then let's judge on these things. If you also like what someone wears, but we also, we don't all agree that it's important, then we don't judge on that. Mm. And with that case, what it does is it allows you to say, I thought dancer A1, I thought dancer A1, you thought dancer B1, why? Mm -hmm. And if your why is outside of this criteria, then that's it your biased matter. opinion that mm -hmm. we highlight and we say we need to correct for that. If your reason is that you saw something in the composition of their round that was better than what, we, that, than what you saw from dancer, one dancer to another, mm -hmm. and it's different to what we said, then your, your, your stance is valid. Which is what I think people are worried that isn't going to be the case, you know, is like, which I, I 
this even just hearing this makes me feel a little bit and i was already kind of on the side of it but it's like that yeah we're just making sure that people are considering all the things that we want them to consider and to be honest as much as i said you know who are the people that are going to make these criteria and can they change blah, blah blah i'm not even against them being different in different places or as long as there is some sort of criteria and i think you know like we were talking about like fun events versus olympic events versus whatever and it's like mm. let's say with basketball it's like um the rules of basketball are like five people versus five people a full court two nets on either end score more baskets blah blah now when we want to do a three-on-three -three fun event we only have three uh, three basketball players on each team they have a half court and the refs are a little bit looser on the fouls because you want it to be a bit more physical yep. and it's a bit more of a fun game it's faster pace with three people there's less strategy in the in the kind of overall game sense it's a bit faster pace a bit more run and gun and people go and watch that as well and if you're a basketball player and you enter that you know you're not like well why isn't there two hoops you're like <laughs> yeah, well it's yeah, a three yeah, on three yeah, yeah. tournament you know what's going on the round the the games are shorter so i think as long as you know what the thing is i don't even mind it being different in different places let's say the kingdom league had a certain criteria and you know oh right i'm entering the kingdoms league today like what, what's that how does it work for them and you may, might train only for one like i know there's like um sports people that train for certain types of events and don't train for others like i'm sure there's a very different we we're talking to sprinter dude but like let's say the uh, it's slightly different because the ask is different but um he was telling us a story about the 300 meter the guy who was like a 100 meter sprinter and he entered a 300 meter yeah, yeah and yeah, it didn't yeah. quite work out for him or something and it's like you train for your event because you know the rules you know how it works you train your body for that one event so if you're it's similar to being like a that way is similar to being like a popper and entering a breaking thing or whatever but you could say right in the kingdoms league they judge like this so i'm gonna train and i'm gonna ba base my rounds on that or this one they they judge a bit more wild and it's just all over the place i'm gonna train it because i only want to do that and it's like as long as there's options you can choose what you train for and you can base your thing on the judge as long as and this is what i think i'm getting from you is like as long as there's uh, you know that someone's considered what the judges should um take into account yes because it's it's transparent right so like for example if you care about winning any any battle event when you go there if you're if you're thoughtful enough i believe you consider who the judge is yeah right and the only reason you consider that is because you consider what type of things that they look for when they're judging or which they shouldn't really but what they what they consider so you shouldn't look for something because it becomes prescriptive it becomes that you're deciding what people should do but unfortunately that's the way it is so when we when we see judges we say oh i reckon that judge uh, judges in this way based on all the events i've seen them at so what i might do is i might cater my dance slightly towards that right which is what we do anyway mm -hmm. which i believe creates more homogeneity within dancers or, or at an event than this these types of systems can because, i say one thing on yeah that. go on just um, just to add that and i'll let you go on, but just i think the reason that credit creates the homogeneity is because we assume how they're going to judge by how they dance so like we see oh jitsu's judging he must only like the way he dances yeah that can which i think is a mistake yeah I, yeah that that you're right that does happen as well i, I was i was Sorry, talking yeah. more specifically about seeing them make judges at right, different right. events right um so we know judges that are going to tie all the time judges that are going to vote for certain uh um uh ideologies within dance whether it's boogaloo style like whatever and these usually are negative things that we're assuming these biases i think so because it what it does is it immediately alienates people that aren't doing specific things things within the dance yeah and if it was a bias towards a certain type of say there's three main judging systems in the uk yeah they're all slightly different but they all encompass eight categories let's say yes and if you're like ah oh, this judge is more he always judges or this event is going to judge on the this system the blah 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 system and this one is going to judge on the trivia system then you could kind of it might not be a negative thing to go oh they're, they're judging on the blah blah system so if i go here i have to kind of cater myself to that as opposed to, I have to only dance Boogaloo if I go there. But yeah, do you mind if I rant for a sec? Is that all right? Come on. Should I fucking, fucking get going? Well, thanks for asking permission. Drag him. Come on. Look, we, like, we, we all talk about uh, subjective things objectively all the time. And we participate in them all the time anyway. So this shouldn't be any kind of stretch of the, the, the imagination to, to think that we can do it within dance and that it won't actually cause any problems. If art, in general, as an umbrella term painting dancing music whatever is subjective why learn it mm. mm -hmm. just right. just put a pen to paper and then say you're an artist don't even put pen to paper 
who's to say that this isn't a drawing? <laughs> It's yeah. subjective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean like that. Like you, like that doesn't make any sense. We understand that there are objectivity, uh, objective ways to talk about subjective things, right? I teach art myself a lot, and I understand that when I'm teaching someone to draw better, what I'm doing is is I'm clarifying what better means. So how to develop a person's drawing technique and ability. And the way I do that is I understand what it is that we as a community, as a society, value about good drawings. Right, so when I'm drawing port, if you don't know, I draw portraits and I and I draw wildlife and whatever. Right, so if if I'm drawing a portrait, which is a drawing or an image of a person, right, and I want to draw a portrait of Moran or of Luke, I want it to look like them because in portraiture we consider likeness to be important. Likeness is not a drawing technique; it's something that we value about portraits. So whenever we're drawing something, the more accurate you can gauge likeness the better that thing is. That doesn't mean it needs to be hyper-realism, which mm. is photorealistic, which means drawing like a photo. It doesn't mean that. I can get likeness with eight marks on a page just because I understand what things are important on a person's face to consider and how to execute them when I'm drawing. Right? But that will be completely different to someone who's going to use oil paints or pencil or charcoal or won't draw both eyes. It doesn't mean you can't get those things. And we see that when we see caricaturists in Leicester Square or whatever, they exaggerate features, but they get likeness brilliantly because they understand how to get things in, in, like, or how to identify the important things within a person's face, right? But they're not going to draw or paint the same way I will. I have a question for you. Yes. Is there, rant, is there more rant? Yeah, I mean, I'll rant kind of whenever, <laughs> but I like questions. So, okay, so here's my question. Right? Yeah. Uh, let's say if we take the art scenario where, let's say likeness is something that is uh, culturally... Accepted. Accepted and, and appreciated, right? Yeah. So if you're going to paint something, I'm going to paint a picture of Lee and Moran's going to take paint a picture of Lee. Hers is going to be a bit more abstract than mine, but you can combine that. You can judge them together. Yes. Mine's going to be sick. Come on. Appreciate that. Energies. Um, now, what if there's someone who, let's say we're, you're saying this is, rather than a portrait of Lee contest... You're saying this is a painting contest, right? Mm. Marin's going to come in and do some expressive strokes in a very abstract way, and I'm going to draw. I'm going to paint a picture of a of a bottle. Let's say that might be harder to compare because, let's say, stuff like it's like so wildly apart. In the same way that all styles battles are kind of hard to set a criteria for because it's like breaking versus crump. Like our criteria separate. So okay. if we if we accept that we need to like break the dance styles into categories at least to be able to judge them because how do you judge breaking versus crump for example right because the the criteria is not universal across all the styles i believe it is okay well that's interesting let's come back to that yes but my i guess my main question you can answer, you can say that in the answer okay. is would judging be easier yeah the more we break down these styles so for example like jack of all trades where yeah. they have like the is it like they have like, is it Jack of all trades? Or they have like tutting battle, waving yes. battle. Yeah. Is that, an, does that make the judging more um, clear, transparent, unbiased? Because it's like, all right, we're not even talking about popping as a whole now. In the same way, we're not talking about street dance as a whole. In the same way, we're not talking about just dance as a whole where you have a fucking ballet dancer and a popper. Yeah. So you're, you're breaking it down, breaking it down. Can we go even further and just say, right, well, the in, in a, uh, in addition to a judging system, we're also going to start doing animation battles. We're also going to start doing hitting battles. We're going to start doing waving battles within this. And we break down the styles and judge them that way to make it even more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Completely. So as far as I I'm aware, the threefold or trivium judging system that they created works um, as when you push the styles as far away as possible, so like crump versus house or whatever, or popping versus breaking. Mm -hmm. And it also works when you're doing uh, really style specific, like tight in animation or top rock or whatever battles, right? Um, I believe it makes it a lot easier if we get the more parameters we put in place because sure. it leaves less room for deviation, mm -hmm. right? Or, or like kind of falling out of categories or whatever, right? So if we have a titan battle, if we say, if we take that whole system of values that don't have any. Um, style specific words and the only style specific word we have is tutting and we say cool then we still like as long as you're doing all of the same stuff but within tutting so your composition of your tuts your uh, your athleticism your performance your creativity your progression from the foundation are you doing tutting like you know these things like mm. so that to be fair progression from the foundation is a, is a part of this system that really is the kind of thing to say make sure you're doing the style yeah right um 
But this, it'd be the same thing in drawing as well. So if we're doing a painting competition, right? And we're saying, cool, then it's a portraiture, right? Or whatever. But if we're just doing, if we're going really wild and we're saying, just do painting. <laughs> Crazy then, shit. Yeah, then it's yeah. like really abstract and really like, like you're painting a bottle, like still life. Then it's a case of, cool, so what things do we value in painting? Form, mm. light, mm. color, mm. composition. Right. So that should enable you to judge me draw, painting a bottle and Marin painting something completely. Absolutely, man. You see, Megan it. again. Me- <laughs> Megan, <laughs> we saw it when you came to Maureen. If it, so, at the, when I was at this art fair, right, the the person that coached me to get into that fair, she does very minimalist work, and a big thing that she uh, um uh, she does in her work is is having as little marks on the paper as possible. Like she'll make an entire piece that's about three or four feet wide with about four or five marks, mm. right? Whereas you've seen my work, and I've got thousands yeah thousands <laughs> right like it like it, mine goes all over the place but we still build our works based on the same principles mm-hmm. mm. color composition form light mm. storytelling whatever like and all things how things work together framing whatever like we still build images off the same principles mm. it's just that the the things that we're doing are going to be style specific so you can still judge someone that's doing crump against breaking because they both have performance creativity mm. composition all mm. the same stuff that you've been saying which to be honest is how i judge all star battles anyway maybe and again not saying i'm the perfect judge because i'm definitely not but like that's where i think actually like my biases and i very rarely judge before i get fucking insta stories made about me but like <laughs> <laughs> like i've uh i, my, I probably judge all stars battles now hearing this, I probably judge them better than I judge a normal battle because it's like, or even when I did the pop in versus hip hop kind of thing, it's like, because within the styles, oh, it's, okay, I see why. you know, it's easier to kind of, I don't know, or it's easier to have a bias and be like, that's more like popping. That's better popping yeah, yeah, yeah. based on my opinions. When I do all styles, I'm like, right, well, I don't know anything about crump. I don't know what style you're doing. <laughs> so all I can do is say, right, who is performing better? Who is using the space? Who is more using the whole full body movement? Who is on the music better? Who is listening and responding and, and presenting to an audience? I'm going for things that are universal yep. so that I can create a level playing field. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there's no way I can say, oh, and even if I could, even if I knew like Crump Foundation and I knew Breaking Foundation, who's to say what's worth, because Breaking Foundation is harder to learn than Crump Foundation. Or even stuff like quality of movement. Quality yeah. of movement in house is going to be different to quality of movement in popping. Yeah. yeah. So to be able to, and that's where you hire someone who's educated on those things to be able to say, I know what it is that I'm looking for when it comes to quality of movement, composition, yeah. or whatever. Which is, I guess, why All Styles Battles are inherently like not going to be judged that great. Yeah, it's Because there is a different thing that you agree on. It's more difficult to remove bias in that situation. Yeah, it's like, I try and look at it as like literally just movement. I'm like, is this so, movement better? Is it well presented? Blah, 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 you know? Yeah, Which is, I'm, yeah. and I'm Sorry. not like against judging regulation. I think it's really interesting. I'm just like seeing where things could fall mm. out, yeah. and where humans are always going to be biased. So it's yeah. interesting to see how can we correct this bias the most. And I can see how those parameters could work, but I am just the questions I have is who are who are the people making these parameters, and are we really not leaving any people out. I'm just, I, the beauty of dance for me is that anything can happen. Mm. Yes. And are we losing that? If we say we do all of the uh, stuff that we spoke about today. Uh, sorry, yeah, I get what you mean now. Yeah, Like okay. we, we do the, the, King, the Kingdoms League and we have the professionals and the amateurs. Okay, so then we're taking away that form yeah. of communication. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're making all these parameters. So what about, even if someone's entering a battle and it's not exact, like the style the whole way through, but he's giving something, like it has value and it helps grow the scene. So I'm just wondering if we put all these things in place and make it super rigid, going back to gymnastics, you know, in gymnastics, you have to do, when you're on the beam, you have to do artistic movements. All the gymnasts just do like, mm, okay, yeah, yeah, tick. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no the creativity is like drained out of them. Yeah. And there's, I really enjoy what, cause I did gymnastics when I was younger, like elegant gymnasts that make it look beautiful, but there's no more points for that right mm. now. So I'm not saying that will happen in breaking or popping or whatever, but there's bound to be something that's going to fall out. You know what oh, I think on, is sorry. interesting in, in that is I actually kind of agree, but I think it's not so much like, 
uh, the, uh, my, uh, let's say, approach or resolution to that is not so much should we create a judging system that doesn't allow people to fall through the cracks who are really creative, but is that we should simultaneously create a net to catch them. Mm. So it's like you these types of people, like let's say someone that like doesn't really do a style, and I've seen loads of people like this, that they're like a really beginner, and like you... You don't quite know how to pop yet, but you kind of got the idea, but you're actually a That's really cool. kind of cool. Yeah, you're like, you're, the stuff you're doing is actually really cool and I really like it, but in this competition, you're yeah. not going to get far. Yeah. Fine, but as long as we, if those people are going to fall out and you're going to be left with the people who are doing this, can we also create something where those people can go in? So can, can we also create battles that it's like, like we were saying before, like, Today, the judge is just going to pick who they think is the best and you guys all have fun and this is just a fun battle where it's not judged like this. And as long as we have yeah. both things, so the people that want to be judged correctly don't go there and the people that just want to have fun, or either they're not taking it seriously or they're just a weird dancer and just want to do weird shit. And this is where experimental at the moment is kind of the, the thing. I feel like people that can't don't enter the other styles because their style doesn't quite fit in those categories... They just go and enter experimental and they go and have fun there and do their work. Yeah, okay. You yeah, know I, mean, I mean, like, like, but I mean, if you, yeah. You're just creating so many different bubbles. But, that, like, but that's a good thing though, right? Like, because if you, like, because like we were saying earlier, there isn't a, there isn't a one size fits all, right? Mm -hmm. Like the idea of what, what Sunny mentioned in the previous part of, of saying that like, this is the, one of the only things where you have professionals against amateurs all the time and, and the, like not just the dangers, but how much exclusionary uh, environments you have where people like, I don't know, pe people like a 40 year old B-boy who wants to participate again is not getting past prelims because there are 16 year old kids flying, right? right or whatever. Like so maybe a, by creating the different bubbles, you're actually creating more inclusion. Yeah. Because you're giving people other spaces to be it's, in. It's inclusivity to the max, man. Like, so it's like, it's like if you want to take you- I disagree with that. Go on. Because I believe that inclu what inclusion is, is not, oh- here we have a group um, full of uh, black men. Yeah. That's not inclusive. It's the same level of exclusive as a group of white men mm. or a group of white women. Like That's the beauty and inclusion is that like talking to each other and cross pollination of ideas and experiences. But and it's, I think but, yeah, sorry. but that's that's not what that's not what's happening but with you're this. But you putting it's levels no, what they're doing is there's this, the difference between a quality of opportunity and a quality of outcome, mm. right? All that all that happen, all that needs to happen in an outcome is like so. What, like the difference would be that every single option is for everyone else, and everyone has to participate equally, right? But it's like all it takes is two people to disagree on, on how much it is that they want to participate in, and then it's not equal, right? Mm. But if you create an op equal a quality of opportunity, where it's you say the Olympics is open for anyone that wants to be able to take it that to that level, right? It's like it's not that me and you can't go into the Olympics because we're excluded because they don't want a, a brown guy or a white woman in there. It's because it's for the, the people that take it the most seriously and that invest the most time. The people that have chosen to do this and that are capable of doing this the most, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they have that system for that, that place. People that dance your style, it's not that they say that, oh, if you don't like uh, crowds and, and you, like that, like you can't come in here unless well, whatever. It's, it's, like, it's slightly different because actually technically the Olympics are open to anyone. You just have to get faster than you're saying. saying. But yeah, then I'm agreeing yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. But Dance Your Style isn't open to anyone because they're all invites. Oh, sorry, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, Apologies, I think this yeah. is where it's like different. Like if we had this thing where, and I hear your point, but I think kind of I'm in the, between both of you, literally and metaphorically. Ho, ho, ho. But like, I think if we created this judging system and we said only the dancers that fit this criteria can enter... Then we have an issue because it's like your base, you like, there's no other way that I can be involved in your thing without being selected, right? Mm. But if it's like the Olympics where it's like, yeah, any literally anyone could, but, but if you want to be in this thing, you have to pass these series of, of, of tests or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that kind of leaves it like this is what I mean about creating the different spaces and stuff because it's like we create this where people can go if you pass these certain things. But then, oh wait, I've kind of lost my thread here. <laughs> Do you mind if I jump in and then yeah, you yeah, can yeah, just go, interrupt, go, go. interrupt me whenever it okay. comes back, right? I think that the thing that I disagree on, on what you've mentioned, even as a reference of saying that here's a group of black men, is that even it's in some cases, that's not, ex that's, not, that's not exclusionary to all groups because I think when attributes matter, mm -hmm. that's when we should make groups of those people because they are excluded otherwise. Like right? if we're trying to... Oh, if we're trying absolutely. to make a, a decision in this room about um, who 
who I don't know, <laughs> like let's say um, we're trying to talk about Asian culture, and we're like, which Asian culture is the most reliant on fish? Random. <laughs> Then in this room Japan. should only be Asian people, right? So we've said we're trying to figure out something. So if you want, like, if you're Asian, cool, come in. Any Asian person can come in because we're trying to delegate something between Asians, right? So then it's like that's not necessarily exclusionary because of the goalposts that we've set, I guess. Where so it's like with us, it's like rather than like Asian people being reliant on fish, it's which athlete can do this thing the best. That's basically sport. So whether it's dance or whatever, we set the criteria and we say anyone can walk through that door. But we're trying to figure out these things. So we, as soon as you hit the first criteria, the first criteria in my Asian example is: Are you from an Asian culture? If you say no, it's like, well, you were included, but you failed at the first hurdle, so you've got to go. Yeah. So is it like? So is in, that kind of making in, sense? Mm -hmm. So in the context of sport, it'd be ability, right? So it's like a football, right. football is one that we're all all understanding of, right? Is that you get Premier League players that literally get hundreds of thousands of pounds per week, right, to to play football. I like playing football as well. There's mm -hmm. no way that I've been, I've liked it enough or been disciplined enough uh, or been good enough to be able to do what they do, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean I'm excluded from playing football. So what Nor about the women's team? They what, don't get paid £100,000. All right, look, all right, so I'm just going to say this as nice as possible, right? So this is my <laughs> But that's a line. different conversation. But, uh, right, no, but it's, it's, it's no, again, a different bubble. We're putting the men here and putting the women here. We're putting the breakers that fit all these criteria here and the breakers that maybe don't have all of these tick boxes. We're putting them here. But can I say one thing? same level, but I think that it's the it. same. We have the same parallel with B-boy and B-girl battles, right? And a lot of the... B girls want there to be a B girl category. They don't want it to be a a one mm -mm. category, like an open breaking category. Some of them want B girl only battles, right? And it's the same thing with um, women's sports. I think a lot of women do want women's sports to be its own thing because they don't want to compete against men in certain. Like if they do, then cool. And you can still play basketball against men. Like when we used to play basketball out on the street, there's a lot of women that used to come and play. There's a mm. lot of fucking really good women basketball players. But you, I think what Lisa is like, you still get to play basketball. It's just, we have to set, um, put these things in different bubbles in order to judge them. So it's like, let's say yeah. you have in, let's say we do the kingdom league and we, like we're, we're talking about the culture versus the sport, I think, which is a, a big conversation anyway, but it's like, we have the kingdoms league and for the sport of it, We have the professional league, we have the amateur league, blah, blah. It's all within the same event so they can see each other and stuff. But for that, you have to be separated because we're trying to judge certain things and we can't judge them if you're not, if we don't put these categories, right? But the after party, the ciphers, the we're not saying you can't come in. We're yeah, just yeah. saying, you know, in all the places that the, I think that the, the cultural mixing pot, uh, melting pot is the word, mm -hmm. matters, we leave... You know, I, I would think it would be shit to be like, and this is where I would agree with you, if they were saying, oh, if you don't, end, uh, if you can't um, match, uh, be in this this category or this judging system doesn't like select you, you can't even come to the event. You can't watch, yeah. you can't cipher. Obviously yeah, yeah. no one's you know going mean? to say yeah. that and that's not what people want, but I'm wondering if that's the outcome. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. And I think, again, this is where we have to look at the, doing a full circle to the uh, catering to different people in events is like mm. when you have um let's say an fa cup final right the people that are shit at football don't feel excluded from that in fact they feel catered to they feel it's for them right so if you're just an average sunday league player you're like well the fucking fa cup final is where i want to i want to get tickets there. i want to go to it because the stands are made for me there's food there's like you know this is put on for me so if we make it feel like these high level professional judge battles are for the audience we're all going to feel included and if we have some sort of like i don't know there's loads of different ways to, to go about it but this is what i mean in terms of the net of like right you're going to filter different people into different places but we need to make sure and this is the cultural side that those people don't just get dropped out of the culture completely sorry mm. but they get like caught somewhere like okay yeah. you can't compete in this event but we're going to make sure you have a fucking whale of a time or you can't compete in this event but we're going to give you you know kids can't compete in some in a lot of battle events, especially from our generation when we first started, it was a lot in clubs and over 18s and stuff. A lot of kids can't compete in these these adult battles, even because they're not strong enough, they're not big enough, they're not old enough, but we still find a way to include kids in the events and have them be at the events and have them cipher. Some events are not inclusive of kids, sure. Um, but yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah, and I think this is the same is thing fine? with this. Yeah, because you don't have to have every event the same. So when we yeah. spoke about judging, when we do have this system, which I'm not, it's sounding like I'm really against no, no. it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not against it. But if we do have the system yeah. and it goes for every event forever from now, well, that's going to be very boring. Like if oh, every right. event if was only 18s and over. Yeah. You need I, ag- like- I agree. Like if you have one system for every event, it doesn't work, yeah. man. Like not, and like, just like we have stuff that's like Neek's event, for example, just wants to be about fun or whatever. If you have invite yeah. events only that are for the crowd or whatever, or if you have like for the Olympics, like different things are going to require different uh, parameters yeah. or, or context, right? Even like, um, just shout out to Sheko who won at the weekend in Outbreak, but uh, he won a, a seven to drink battle. And every time you win, it's a seven to smoke. Every time you win, you have to take a shot. Uh, no. How sick is that? <laughs> but it's like, clearly Get this mashed. is not fair. <laughs> like, yeah. People... Uh, tolerate alcohol differently i mean i don't know that you should be breaking drunk but like that that sounds like a uh, (laughs) that sounds like that wouldn't happen in the uk yeah but should it (laughs) (laughs) but this is what i mean where it's like okay you have that and that's hilarious and that's fun but then you also have yeah yeah, the actual outbreak battles and then you have rep your country which is more just everybody gets together based on their country and not their skill level you know yeah I think yeah, there's, there should be different things. And agreed. I'm like, I'm just intrigued to see how, you know, this is going to work out. And I'm, I'm sure that yeah. it's like an iterative process where, sure. you know, something won't work. We adapt it and it adapts how the culture is going to evolve as well. That the judging system is going to evolve. And I'm all for it. I'm just like intrigued to see how it works. But what I would say is until then, when we have events where people just judge and there's not this one system. Yeah. Maybe event organizers, and I'm looking at myself, should put on put out the judging criteria beforehand to kind of take away the heat of the judges who are there doing their best and working hard, um, so people know what they're what or they're at least up against. Like putting it out to the to the to the audience, but also maybe giving one to the judge and to the judge, yeah, yeah exactly. and saying, listen, and don't yeah, don't yeah, make yeah. up your own one, or at least maybe the judge could present one to you, yeah, and you could like, say, listen, cool. can you present us your judging criteria beforehand so we can ensure, even if you know, like Lee's going to judge at one event and I'm going to judge at another event, we might present two different judging criteria, which at the moment is not ideal, but it's yeah. something. But at least if we present it beforehand, the event can check and go. Okay, you've got, and then if it just says who I like better, it's like, all right, well, okay, we <laughs> need to talk about this. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, but if you say to them, can you present us with how you judge and write it down? If we don't agree, we're going to talk it through. We're going to need to have a meeting before the event and say, yeah. can you also add in this and this and this? Good, now you can go and judge. And then there's a bit of in the interim before this, because also these things are going to happen from the top down. So yeah. Undisputed, Red Bull, they're all going to get this system first. The cultural events are going to have it last and the training and all that because there's no money to do that. So in the interim, until that trickles down, I think that's a sick idea. Yeah, and I don't really see the the point in posting like random statements on Instagram. <laughs> all the way, I'm yeah. not a big fan of that. I don't think it's productive to the scene. I do really like feedback. Whenever I do events, I send out feedback forms and with Rain Crew events or East Sundance events, I do try and like make it better and better and better. And, but then also there's just, I really like this thing that Clint has said to everyone in Rain Crew is like, if you do a battle and they vote against you, then you just didn't do a good enough of a job. Yeah. Don't go to, I mean, unless like, train hard, oh, unless like, the, like if As you a, want to like, win, yeah. like you need to be, so good that there's no doubt like if you don't win the judge looks bad you know like i know exactly why you're saying all about that and let me tell you let me tell you why let me tell you why because that's a white uh, it's a wider issue that we should look at you've got to say white it's a white people (laughs) thing no (laughs) it's a wider issue to to worry about these um judging issues and it takes infrastructure and people to get together and make these decisions. I think that's important and it should be happening and we should be making changes. However, as a competitor in the moment, this is not something that you address then and there because when we used to play basketball, right? That we would, you know, travel and sometimes the referees would be people from that hometowns. Like Mm. uh, it's like they they play basketball with these guys and they're, 
they're refing the game against us. They're making unfair calls the whole time. Like, yeah. and what always would happen every time, and especially when we were, we were like 18 year olds. So it's like, people get fucking, you're playing basketball, you're hyped up, you're testosterone, you want to fight people. You're like, fuck you ref, blah, blah, blah. But what the coaches, every coach I've ever had, and it's just a known thing, I think across like a lot of competitive sports is, let the coach deal with that. I will contest, if I'm the coach, I will contest the calls. I will talk to them after. I will submit a complaint. I will talk to the regulatory bodies, right? In the moment, you play the best basketball you can. You play the, we call it like, um, you're playing against six, like, I don't know the expression, but like you're playing against six people yeah, rather yeah, than yeah, the yeah. five. It's like, you also have to play against the ref and you have to, if you know the ref is calling bullshit calls, we're going to deal with that. But in this game, you play the cleanest you can. You keep your hands away from them. You, you don't take any risks because you know the ref is looking for a reason to fuck you up. So I think that works as a competitor in the moment because I don't think it's good to like, you lose and then you're like, oh, fuck this, fuck that, blah, 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 fuck you. It's like, calm down, chill out, take the L and then go and make some change in a, in a bigger, wider yeah, And ask way. feedback from the judges. Yeah, and, and deal with it afterwards, you know, however you want to deal with it. But in i think you you have to as a competitor not let especially if you've got more battles to do in that day imagine you're doing that round robin thing and one battle you think they're being biased so it throws you off and you're going crazy it's like you've got other battles to do keep your fucking head in the game you know it's like a boxer doesn't worry about that during the round is like oh the referee's not or they're not calling the right points when i'm hitting him it's like that's what the coach is for that's what after is for that's what the investigations and stuff you know what i mean yeah does that make sense? Like, I think it's just a, no, it, it in makes, the moment versus a wider issue. No, yeah, it absolutely. It, make, it makes sense. But yeah, I think if conversations like this or even stuff when people are posting on Instagram, I, I disagree with you on that. I think it's a good thing because like, there's, there's stuff that their opinions or conversations that I wouldn't know of or, or have any idea of if people hadn't expressed them yeah, publicly. Yeah, if it's construct constructive like feedback. Yeah, I mean, even but even if not, even like this whole Castro thing, right? Even if it's not, it's like, oh, so there's someone else that gives a shit about it. And it's like, even like, now I know that. And even though I'm like, yo, fuck this guy's approach, man. This guy's like, like that was stupid. That was stupid. That was, that was the worst way to advertise a class this <laughs> task that I've ever seen in my life. But it's like, I still want to hear what he has to say. I'm probably not going to go to his, I'm definitely not going to go to his judging workshop. <laughs> but I still want to hear the conversation. I'm still going to listen to when he comes on the podcast. I think for me, it's like levels of communication. Yeah. I prefer an Insta story to no communication, but I also prefer a conversation. No, I prefer a podcast to an Insta story <laughs> and I prefer, prefer a conversation in real life to a podcast. I prefer a typed yeah. note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A letter. Yeah. But it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, an Insta story is better than nothing, but there are still better ways well, to do I it. Don't, I don't know that I fully agree with that. And to be to really honest with you, when you posted it on the capsule- <laughs> You were fucking stupid. I was like, hmm. Yeah. And I wasn't like, I know not everyone agreed with uh, me posting it, but- Well, I'm not, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with it, but I was in two minds. One, I was like, you're doing like you're being unbiased and you're posting what's out there and on the other hand is like do some things need to like be fueled when it seems so unlike yeah unlike, i also don't like, think it's fair to that people don't get a chance to respond and that was my main thing with posting and sharing that is not to amplify negativity and say this is an important conversation if it was just like Lee's ugly. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm not like, going like to post that. Yeah, I'm not going to share that. But seen as, Ooh. I know it's an inflammatory thing and, and even like sharing it, it could be seen as like you're, you're fueling the fire. But I also think, yes, I'm fueling the fire, but I'm fueling the conversation, which for me is more important. And it's worth the right. fire that comes with it. It's worth yeah. people's backs getting up because of how much conversation this is going to generate and has generated yeah. privately and in public. So for me, when that's... I, saw it, yeah. I was thinking like, oh, but, you know, I know you, so I know your intentions. But no, I knows. did when I first saw it, I was like, <laughs> yeah, really? But n not in like... Uh, yeah, and I mean, that's fine. And I think, yeah, I think everyone's, you know, what we're talking about contribution. And this is something I had a conversation with. I had a conversation about privately the other day. But in terms of sharing stuff like that, Everybody's contribution is everybody's contribution. And I think I'm 100% down for people to disagree with how I go about things, whether it's stuff I say on the podcast, whether it's stuff I do in the capsule, whether it's the way I operate anything, fine. But in the same way that Firehouse can run their event how they like to, I don't go and say, you know, well, I can say I don't like that round robin thing. Doesn't mean they should change it. Yeah, exactly. I, I do like it for, for the record. But <laughs> in the same way that it's like, you know, people might disagree with some of the stuff I do in the capsule, but you know, 15 years here, this is my way of giving back. And if I think this is going to help more than it is going to hinder, 
you can disagree. Not you, but whoever yeah. but can disagree. But I think disagree, that's good because I know that you had that like well, yeah. thought behind it, behind posting it. But yeah. Yeah, it's and I think like, it's important for people to because what happens? All the people that aren't from the UK scene that only follow Castro now just have the blanket image that the UK is shit. Whereas if you get people to have a conversation and respond, now there's balanced conversation to be found about this thing yeah. in the world. Whether it's the statuses that like Sean and uh, whoever breaks and whoever else made, whether it's this podcast, whether it's the conversation I'm going to have with Castro. Mm -hmm. Like, I think generating more intellectual discourse is always worth a bit of uncomfortable. Now, if it was yeah. really bad and I thought, okay, the, the conversation that's going to come from this is not worth how horrible this thing is, that would have been my judgment to not do it. But... Anyway, yeah. that's just a little bit about my reasoning of the th certain things that I share, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. I think you're doing cool things. Um, and yeah, I'm super... <laughs> <laughs> She's like, fuck this podcast. <laughs> I, I am so warm. Cool yeah, I, don't know. I am so hot. We definitely <laughs> should wrap. We are so way over time. Gross. I might even have to cut this down a bit, but let's see. Um, all right, well, let's thank you guys. my bits out. <laughs> just every time. She's like, <laughs> and then we cut back to us. <laughs> um... You know, thank you guys for being here. Um, you're going to be here more frequently, maybe less so you, unless you want to be. You're always welcome to oh, have yeah. a mic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Ever I'll again. Be here, so, yeah. um, we'll hopefully have Sophia back next week. She's currently in Arizona competing at the HHI World Hip Hop Championship. So, Is it? Yeah, I hope she's doing well. Yeah. She's uh, competing with Unity there in, yeah, Phoenix. Nah. Are they in Phoenix, Arizona now? Yeah, we went back when it was in Vegas. Good times. Us OGs. Um, yeah. I did that once. As well. Did you? Is it? Yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, and the Red Rock Resort. Yeah, that's oh. where we went. What yeah. year? 2009 or 10? It might be 2010. Oh, we were probably there at the same time. Yeah. How cute. Interesting. Yeah, the Red Rock was fun. Wunderbar. <laughs> um, yeah, well, thanks everyone for listening. I know it's been a longer one today. Um, yeah, so again, one more shout out to my two co-hosts. Shout out to East London Dance uh, for housing us at their talent house. Much appreciated. And um, none of the opinions expressed are theirs. <laughs> it's all us. Or ours. As the disclaimer <laughs> says at the beginning. Um, yeah, and as always, uh, follow the capsule on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube. Um, that's it wherever else you want to do and uh yeah i don't really have anything else to say didn't plan an outro so here it is gonna just sing till i get done and then i'm gonna hit the button to make it stop and then we talked about such serious things that are now i gotta finish with a fun little song fun little song gotta make a judging criteria gotta make sure events others are categorized in different ways and all of that shit too it's super important singing at the new place and my camera kept dying it's okay we're working out the kinks oh yeah gonna say goodbye now